Hey, hello, this is Captain. Welcome to the Build Challenge Hotel Review. So we're going to be going over all the builds here. We have some really great ones. Uh, the challenge was to build a truck that could haul a container. So let's go ahead and look at the rules. rules. Challenge to build a container truck. The container truck must be able to carry and load itself one container. The build size is limited to the train spawn and spy cakes. Infinite electric and fuel off. Vehicle damage on. No glitches. A new build. Not previously released to the workshop. Let's operate in the honor system here. This should be newly started build. The time of the challenge. Rules. XML cosmetics. Wheels may be XML edited for grip and to make dualies. Size would all fit in the train spawn and spy kicks. Power. Diesel modular. Uh, cost is less than 100000 All microcontrollers and components must be made by you. Nothing from the workshop. Uh, testing methodology. I will spawn the truck at the train spawn at Spy Cakes. I will head down the hill and self-load a container from Spy Cakes. I will then follow the path of the red line to drain more. I will then unload the container. Grading. Spirit of the challenge. How well does it conform to the challenge? 1 to 10. Human factors. How well am I able to interact with it? 1 to 10. Handling 1 to 10. Aesthetics 1 to 10. Workshop page 1 to 10. Uh, winners. There will be a points winner. Captain favorite. Cap and the uh, community favorite. Winners will be featured in the end credits of my videos for a month. Winners will have Discord roles added. Winners will have their container truck used in an episode of the Career Build Series. So here we have the path in here that the route will take. So we'll go from Terminal Spy Cakes over here, we'll grab a container, and then we'll head up the hill. It's an off-road challenge for this part. And then we're going to come over here and we'll unload at Draymore. And the first build is the Marley Automobiles Model 759 flatbed truck. So I like this thumbnail here. It has um, some good branding on there. Nicely done on that. A little basic on the pictures, but they are very nice pictures at that. Shows off the vehicle well. Von Dusi. Developed for Captain Cargo's Build Challenge Hotel, this truck is capable of loading the standard container without the use of external equipment. The truck incorporated a tilt bed design to allow the connector carriage to pull the shipping container onto the bed of the truck or to allow vehicles to be pulled on for towing. The tilt bed is controlled from the control panel located on the driver's side, just rear of the cab, or with a handheld remote control. The truck also features two storage lockers placed on either side of the truck. Refueling can be done from the hose anchors located on either side of the truck and an electrical anchor for recharging batteries located in the engine compartment on the passenger side. The engine compartment can be accessed by releasing the two latches located on either side of the hood. Now, we have general characteristics. The width, the length, the height. Transmission is six-speed. Manual fuel capacity is 750 liters, 200 gallons. Maximum speed is 50 meters per second or 180 kilometers an hour. Math 2671 uh, and a cost of 46000 and change. Driving controls, AED is steering, WS throttle brake, left right turn signals, up down is the gear shifter, trigger is the horn, handbrake is one, it is on by default, cycle headlights off, low beam, high beam, flatbed remote controls, WS winch in and out, left right is carriage in and out, uh, up down increase, decrease bed elevation. For remote control operation, the receiver must be turned on and uh, tuned to the desired frequency. The receiver controls are located at the top of the control panel. Loading instruction. During loading and unloading evolutions, ensure the vehicle is in park while the transmission is in neutral. Step one, position the truck a few inches away from the payload. Secure the Mansfield bar switch located on the control panel. Happens automatically when the bed is raised. Raise the bed to desired elevation. Position the carriage at the lowest position. Once the payload is secured, pull the carriage back to the highest position. Lower the bed to its lowest position. Deploy the Mansfield bar. For unloading, repeat this process in reverse or release the carriage connectors as well as track brakes and allow the container to slide off the back. Tips for driving. Third gear is recommended when carrying a payload. Keep in mind the vehicle makes wide turns. Exercise caution when turning at, low, at speeds greater than 40 miles an hour while carrying a payload to avoid rollover. Engine will stall if you exit the vehicle without putting it in neutral. That's neat. When restarting a stalled engine, put the transmission in neutral and restart the ignition. The truck is equipped with an alarm that once activated will shut off after 15 minutes when the ignition is active or when the horn is pressed. All right, here we are with the Marley. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, do a quick walk around here. Nice design here in the cab. Have some uh, angled paint blocks, it looks like there. License plate bull bar. Looks nice, Marley. Can uh, do the hood latches here. Nice big big motor in here. I like the uh, detailing of the hood latches. That's cool. It's a lot of uh, lighting on here. Nicely shaped bumper. Have a step up and a uh, cool fuel tank here. I like that. Good XML work on that. Here's a storage locker on this side. Good detailing on there. I like the control panel here. Some good detailing. And we have the remote control. I'm just going to use the standard control for this. 
Uh, I have some dualies. Really good detailing on this. I like the window pieces here on there. Nice for rails. Good detailing on there in general. Have the uh, lights in the bumper there. Storage on this side as well. Nice detailing all around on this. Very good. So let's go ahead and we'll get started. So see if I can find the door latch. There it is. Driver's side door. We have a uh, buzzer that goes off when we go to get in. Speedo, fuel gauge, engine temp, uh, tack. We have low fuel and handbrake indicator. We have the hazard lights, cabin light, cabin heater, bat volts, and voltmeter. All right. A little shift knob in the middle there. Skylight. Very cool. All right, let's go ahead and we will start up. All right, I'm not seeing where to start this, so we'll take a look. Uh, let's see, not seeing on the seat. Let's see, is there ignition right there? I can't see it, just behind. Okay, perfect, it's right there. All right, we are up and running. We have hazard lights on there. Nice detailing there, nice looking lights. Very cool. And we can actually hear it. It's clicking. That's neat. That's a neat feature. I like that. We have the uh, headlights, so we do two. All the interiors light up there. We have some running lights. We have our uh, headlights going on there. Cycle it again. There are high beams. And off. So that's cool. Nice to see that. Go ahead and shut those uh, hazards off. We have the handbrake. Handbrake is one. I pressed the wrong button. Space is the horn. Go ahead and shift up into first here. So, uh, can use the mirrors. I can see right where I'm supposed to on the mirrors there. Nice backup alarm. We have a, a reverse cam. Oh, go down and grab a container here. So uh, nice to see the H menu filled out. AD steering, WS throttle brake, left, right is left turn. We'll turn that on. We get that clicker again. I like that. There's the right. Nice. All right, we try to use the mirrors here to get us in. So mirrors are pretty usable. Nice to have a backup alarm. It always makes it easy to find the uh, reverse. All right, there we go. Gave it a little bit of a kiss. All right, so we'll go into neutral, and we'll put the parking brake on. There's parking brake right there. All right, and we'll just jump in our seat and let that door open. Beautiful. All right, so let's go ahead, and we'll uh, start to load. All right, so reading instructions during loading and unloading. Uh, ensure the vehicle is in park with the transmission neutral. It is. Position the truck a few inches away from the payload. Secure the Mansfield bar. Switch located on the control panel. Uh, all automatically happens when the bed is loaded. So let's look at that. See, uh, secure uh, secure slash deploy Mansfield bar. So that would be right here. That's uh, in the U.S. at the ICC bumper. So that is up. All right, good. That is up. Let's go ahead and uh, raise the bed to desired elevation. So this will increase elevation. So nice. Good detailing on there. Uh, simulate hydraulics. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and select the um, container on. All right, position the carriage at the lowest position. So where's the carriage? Carriage out right there. You can see it going down. All right, that should be there. I might be a little bit off. I might have to move it up. It just keep going a little bit. Probably have to get a little bit adjusted here. I'm a little bit off center here. See if I don't think I can push a container. I might be able to push the truck. Do it just to expedite. Pretty close. All right, so I'm just going to uh, move to connect that. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll just uh, move up. Can't see my container with the um, door open, so we'll do this. This be a good test of the mirrors. The mirrors are pretty good. I can actually see right where I'm trying to look, so we'll see if we can grab it. All right, so we're not hitting the container that might be disconnected on there itself. So let's go ahead, and uh, we'll see if there's a, if it starts in the disconnected position. Let's see. Uh, release connector is false. Nope, so we should be able to grab them. Just uh, had yet to hit it. So let's go ahead and back it up. There we go. All right, good. So let's go in, um, in uh, neutral and put the brake on. 
Alright, and we're good to go. Alright, nice. So we are connected. Let's go ahead and we will lower the carriage and we'll start to winch in. I'm just going to let it get a pretty flat. There we go. Grabbed on. Alright, and we'll go ahead and we'll drop the, uh, the bar there. All right, good. So the bumper is down. We should be all locked up. Let me just double check. Once payload is secure, pull the carriage back to highest position, lower the bed, deploy the Mansfield bar. Okay, good. So we're all set to go. So let's go ahead and we'll close it up. Go ahead and get rid of that H menu one. And here we go. It says uh, third gear, but I'm just going to drive it. I'll shift as I find necessary. If I have an issue, I will follow the instructions explicitly. Let's do a little bit of maneuver test. We'll go through here. All right, so here we go. We're going to turn left here and go back up toward the train depot, and this will give it a good test on this hill. This is a pretty steep hill, and make sure we have good clearance there. Yep, no problem there. Drives well. I do like the mirrors. The mirrors are actually usable. That's that's definitely a nice thing to have is usable mirrors. I'm just going to go third person again, checking clearance. We don't seem to have any sort of ground clearance problems, which are nice. Turns well. Having good maneuverability on this. It does have suspension on it, on the front. So handles well. Not having any problems, not having any sliding. A little bit surprised with just that it is uh, pretty low in mass. Usually uh, something this low in mass, the container is about... Uh, a little bit more than 50% of its mass, so it's doing pretty well handling that container and still being stable. So just being careful coming over the top of this hill. Got a nice long American nose on there. It's challenging to see over. There we go. Beautiful. So handles it really well. We do have the snowy conditions here for Christmas, so we want to make sure that we're not going off-road with this. We don't want to lose any traction. A little bit of winter wonderland here. Very nice. There's uh, something on the ground there. Some sort of animal, I believe. But uh, drives really well. Yeah, no real complaints there. Drives really well. It um, behaves well. Nice interior here. You know, nice and analog. A little bit... Um, it's neat with the... I like the uh, sunroof on there. I like the reverse camera. The uh, rear view mirror is nice. Let's go ahead and we will uh, set the brake and we'll go down in neutral. We cannot operate this. We cannot, um, if we don't put it in neutral, we will stall getting out. So we need to make sure we do that. All right, so the Mansfield bar is coming back up. There it goes. All right, we're going to go ahead and we'll increase the elevation and push the uh, container out. All right, so I'm just going to drop the angle a little bit. That will help with uh, probably not pushing us forward. There we go. All right, now we're going to go up. All right, there we go. Nice. Let's see, where's the disconnect release? Connector, very nice. So this uh, this was a really cool truck, worked really well. Uh, no complaints with this at all. I really like the detailing, having um, a DOT tape on the sides uh, the rails are a nice addition. I wish we would just have some more bar, uh, some more parts, so that we didn't have to look at the. Uh, sometimes you get a little reflection, but again, that's we are working with the parts we have. Really good detailing all around. I like the dualies. Nice tank detailing on there. Really good detailing all around. Uh, nice use of paintable indicators, but a uh, really cool build. And thanks for sharing it. And the next build is the Valiant ST-1600. So nice picture here with. Some branding on there. A couple good pics. We get a, a 3D model there. Let's see if we can get it, give it a spin. So that's cool to have a 3D model. I like that. That's neat. Have some good pictures here. Nice uh, cab over design. This is by Zizo. Valiant truck allows for container transportation with ease. Fully built with career mode in mind. This truck is very reliable and fully recoverable. Uh, the separate body bumper and cab as well as the high suspension design is 
allow for a little bit more reckless driving without critical damage. The side loading solution is great for loading and unloading low bed container train cars. The drawback is that you need to precisely park next to the container in order to load it. Features drivetrain 16 cylinder W, 8 gear automatic sequential with top speed of 130 kilometers an hour. Double radiator cooling, 8x8 twin steer. Uh, keep gear option, disable up shifting, stay in higher torque gears. Automatic parking brake when in neutral. Uh, speed filtered linear steering, look up to enable mouse steer. Uh, cruise control to help avoid going full speed all the time. Generator mode when in neutral. Details, mass 22, 44 kilograms, price $28,000, fuel 1,400 liters. Accessories, side load container crane, mag all anchors, front winch, sleeper, tilting cab, hand crank start in case of battery damage, fully geared with equipment. Uh, realistic low high beam lighting and dimming, RGB lights with indicator and warning lights, analog dashboard. Uh, next gen navigation map with transponder locator. Uh, disable automatic parking brake option for towing and recovery. Usage. Start the engine flip switch on the right of the steering wheel. You'll need to tap WS to switch between uh, drive, neutral, reverse. Control panel for the container crane is on outside on the pasture side. Park on the side of the container parallel to it. At about uh, one and a half meters, make sure the truck is in gear. Zero, neutral, and the parking brake is enabled. Drop the anchors for truck stability. Enable connectors. Raise the arms until the container connects. Turning off the anchor switch will automatically load and secure the container. Good to know. Then actually raise the anchors. Uh, button three cycles the light modes. Four engages cruise control at current speed. Braking or pressing four again will disengage it. Let's go ahead and take a look. All right, let's take a uh, walk around the Valiant here. So I really like the paint job here. Nice detailing on there. Kind of like a Volvo, um, old school Volvo grill on there. Good paint job there and branding. See the radiator in there. Definitely kind of a tall beast. It's kind of an off-roady uh, one with the winch on the outside there. All nice sort of paintable indicators. Nice detailing there. There's our uh, cab rays. We'll go quickly give that a tilt there. That's a neat feature. Let's see if I can, uh, I'm not sure how to lower it down. Let's see if we can uh, lower it down. We'll, oh, there it goes. It was going. There we go. You just have to give it a delay, and then it goes again. So that's kind of a neat feature. I like that. Very cool. We like that. All right, good. So nice detailing in here. A lot of parts on here for all the stability stuff. So, uh, you know, a little bit. Don't see much frame rail in there, but that's fine. A little bit of exposed stuff here and there. The big globes on the bumper. I kind of like seeing some of the more detailed bumpers with the um, paintable indicators, but that's still cool. Let's see. Have the crane here, anchors and connectors. We have a fluid hose anchor there. Nice detail in there on the step up. So let's make sure we are left-hand drive. We are. Nice uh, detail in the door there to have the little uh, blind spot window. Let's go ahead and jump on in. All right, so nice analog in here. So we have uh, kilometers an hour, bat, fuel, gear, temp, RPS, uh, liters per second, get that engine starter going on there. We have a moving map, sequential, uh, disengage, park, brake, keep gear. Okay, so that's if we want to stay in a gear. Turbo pressure and air brake. We have a sleeper cabin here with some stuff uh, for rescues, which is nice to see. A bunch of stuff over there, all sorts of equipment here. So let's go ahead and steering's AD, uh, WS is throttle, brake left, right is indicated. Up, down is the sequential gearbox. Uh, space is the parking brake. Two is the klaxon. Three is the lights. So let's go ahead and take a look. That's neat how they come up. Uh, let's go ahead and press them again. And there are high beams. Very neat. I like that feature. I really like these lights in the front bumper. They're really well done there. Uh, you know, they look like actual uh, panes of plastic or glass on there. Uh, you know, I'd like to see something like that in the rear. Uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with those default lights, but really good detail on the lights in the front. I really like how they turned out there. Uh, it'd be cool to see that on the back as well. And last tap is off. So we have left is the left indicator. Right is the right indicator. Very cool. Uh, six is hazards. Neat. Very cool. Okay, good. So let's see. Um, we'll go ahead and we'll get back in first person here. W will put us in first. And it's kind of, you know, it's an automated gearbox for the most part. We can keep it in gear. Steers well with the um, with the uh, dual steer axles in the front. 
All right, nice. Let's see, make sure we don't have any high center problems or we slam the bumper on the way down. It's close, but it uh, made it fine. So, All right, so it loads off the uh, right side. We want about a meter and a half, so I'm just going to keep in third person so we can see a little bit better. Uh, that's more than a meter and a half there. Let's see how the mirrors function. Don't have much sight on the mirrors. They're not bad, but um, I'll keep an eye on this one. We'll try to line up with the mirror. So let's go. All right, there's reverse. We're in reverse. Yeah, it's putting me in first when I try to click the brakes. Just a preference thing. Yeah, it's a little bit confusing just to try to make sure I keep it in gear. There we go. Let's get lined up right about there, maybe. Let's slam on the brakes. All right, good. So let's go ahead, and I want to put on the uh, park brakes. So that's space, or we just have it neutral. It's automated. It said it was automated. Let's just double check. I'll check the wheels, but I um, believe it's automated. Brake is false. Okay, so we want to get that on. So parking brake, let's go ahead. I just want to make sure the brakes are on for safety sakes. Uh, brake is false. Let's see, variable brake. Um, let me just read these rule. Uh, read the, uh, it says make sure the truck is in gear zero neutral and the parking brake is enabled. Okay, let's see. Let's check this driver's seat here. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. Trigger is false. Let's press it again. Parking brake space. Let's see what's up. All right, um, trigger is space. I'm getting false on that, so I'm not sure what's up with this. Space is parking brake. All right, I am pressing space, and I'm not getting the parking brake, so I'm not sure what is up with that. Could be something I'm doing. All right, we do need to go back a little bit, so let's just reverse a little bit. A little bit more of an automation than I like, just because I don't know what to do here if I press. See, like, I'm... Just mostly preference, but it's like I'm, you know, I have to like double tap to change uh, forward back. Tend to prefer to, uh, you know, have a consistent brake on there. All right, let's go ahead and try the parking brake here. Try it again. I don't know if it actually operated. Let's check it. Yeah, it still says brake false. So it does say, um, again, clearly says there, space is parking brake. I'll hit it one more time. And we'll see. When you look at the seat, uh, trigger is false, so not sure what's going on with that. We'll try it without the parking brake. I have tried it, as you can see, many times. All right, so to um, go ahead and do this, we want to drop the, uh, make sure the truck is in neutral. It is. I can't get the parking brake on. Not sure what that's about. Drop the anchors for truck stability. So here we go, anchors. All right, those are now connected. All right, um, we'll see if we're close enough. Not sure. Um, again, I'm eyeballing here, so um, enable connectors. Okay, there we go. All right, and then the crane. So I will enable, uh, this is top loader. So actually, I'll shut that off till we get in position. I think I'm, I might be a little bit far afield on this. Actually, we're probably pretty damn close. Okay, so that's on top already. That's fine. We'll raise the crane up a little bit. Oh, I accidentally clicked the anchor there. Uh, what's going on here with the crane? Okay, there we go. I'm not sure. See, these aren't really telling me up or down, but I think we're all right. Okay, let's try to uh, get a connection on this here. Just going to back up just a hair. Not a huge fan of this gearbox, just the way it... Um, you know, I don't have any... I can't really just get it put where I want because I have to like did the brake finally come on oh uh, the uh, the anchors are still down yeah I'm not a huge fan of this gearbox actually we'll keep the connectors out I want to keep the connectors out oh it's, it's automated this is kind of the downside of some of this automation is it makes it so that I you know can't put it precisely where I want it okay so I have to do third person if I want to see this I'm not a huge fan of that gearbox just because of the way that it's tough to know exactly where I'm at. And I can't get this in, uh, I can't get the parking brake on. So let's go ahead and let's extend the crane. So let's go, where's connectors on? 
Connectors on. Let's go out. That's the problem with like having an automated system. Uh, let's go ahead. It wants anchors down. All right. Let's go ahead and try it now. You know, if you get a strange situation, which is not necessarily ideal, you can't really, for example, I can't grab this container and maybe drag it close to me, stuff like that, if it's too automated. That's why I tend to like a little less automation on some of the stuff. That one back one is not grabbed yet, so I can see I can't really, it's tough to get this exactly how I want it. Okay. All right, so let's drag it on. There we go. It uh, works smoothly now once we've got it, though. It's uh, nice and smooth. It, it puts it exactly where it needs to go. But, you know, we kind of have to be exactly where we want, where we need to be. Let's go ahead and I don't know what to do with that. Uh, let's see. Enable connectors. Raise the arms until the connector. Turning off the anchor switch will automatically load and secure the container. Okay, so that works. Then actually raise the anchors. All right. We did all right there, and uh, that should grab, and we should be good, so... Me not reading the instructions perfectly. Not really sure about how I like... I'm not a really big fan of this transmission. I couldn't get the parking brake on. But besides that, it was it was cool mechanism. It works. It's loaded. I really like the... Uh, I like the uh, twin axle steering there. That's neat. I really like the paint job a lot. The paint job really speaks to me. I kind of like a little bit more of a, um, I don't know, conventional transmission. I want, you know, personally, I like a W for forward. I like an S for always brake. I'm not a huge fan of this auto shifting in reverse. It's a little bit um, gamey for me. A little bit um, disengage park brake. Yeah, see, like the automated park brake I don't think is working. Unless it's on a single axle, and the axle I've been checking isn't park braked. But um, could be that. I did not check every axle. Uh, you know, I could go in a keep gear, but it's over here where, you know, I tend to like a manual myself, but not the end of the world. You know, like IRL, I would put it in a gear and keep it. Like, I could click keep gear, but I have to kind of look away down for it. You know, so that's why I tend to like to have it on, you know, up, down, or something like that. Like, I don't mind an automatic mode and then the ability to select a gear. So we have that gear shift off here. So it's going to shift its gears. As, you know, I took the uh, gear keep off. So it should shift itself. One of the reasons I don't like automatic transmissions in a real truck is, you know, I've driven quite a few tractors, trailer, you know, tractors, for tractor trailer, that have automatic gearboxes, and they'll do things like exactly what this is doing. This is pretty realistic. It will switch gears when you don't want it to. Like right now, I would want to be in a low gear to go down a steep hill. So I would have to click over there. Yeah, so it's not bad, but it's like I have to reach way over here for that. That would be kind of cool if you could either do this or it's on the seat. You know, now that we're on flat terrain, it's not a big deal that it wants to shift gears all the time. But that is, that's one of the reasons why I don't like it even in a real tractor IRL is, like, it doesn't know what you're doing. You know, I find a manual transmission in a real tractor nice just because, you know, for example, if I'm going to take this left turn and it wants to shift me up into 8, you know, that is not great. But, um, you know, no big deal in that. I'm just, I'm not a huge fan of the way that, uh, you know, you go reverse by pressing S and then... You know, you're trying to stop, and then it wants to shift gears on you, and you're not necessarily... It's just not something I'm used to, personally. Not a big deal. Just not something I'm used to. All right. Currently in um, zero. Let's hopefully the parking brake comes on. All right, let's get out. I do really like the design of the cab, though. That's neat. All right, let's go ahead on the other side. All right, let's see. Go ahead, and we want to drop the anchors. All right, and let's go ahead, and we'll raise it up. A little bit more labeling here. We just have crane on, off there. Not bad, but a little bit of labeling there would be nice. All right, that is down. Let's go ahead and try connectors off. 
Okay, see, I don't know what it does when it does this. Yeah, I'm not sure what that's all about, so we'll probably have to keep it on. I don't know, let's see. Okay, there we go. But, uh, cool, cool loading mechanism. You know, we'll try doing anchors off and have it stow. So if I shut the anchors off, it stows, it automates that, which is neat. So it probably knows if it has a connector, if it has a container on it because of the connectors, and it will just load it or unload it. We didn't do the auto load feature last time. Really neat uh, tractor. You know, I really love the cab over design. I like the twin steer axles. I really like the paint job a lot. I really like the all the, um, the paintable indicators up front. Uh, the transmission was a little bit funky to me. Just, uh, you know, I wasn't sure what I was doing here and there. Uh, loading was, uh, it loads nicely. It's just a little bit, a um, little bit interesting trying to get that loaded. But I'm, sh I'm sure that if I uh, played with it a little bit, it would become uh, a little bit clearer to me. So great build, and thank you for submitting it. And the next build is the cab over container lifter. So we still have that vehicle on there, but it's integrated with the uh, cab over container lifter. So that's kind of neat, like that. Uh, let's see, we have a couple good pictures here. We have the cab over, kind of old school looking. Another uh, side loader, this one a trailer this time. So this is a sling loader. So it kind of, it has a cable sling on there. That's neat, by uh, Timotheus. Uh, cab over and container lifter inspired by Freightliner and side loading trailers or trucks. The truck is capable of uh, side loading standard stormers containers it has to be loaded over the left side okay so we'll keep that in mind uh just park a few blocks to the side and fairly precisely lengthwise half a block next to the container start swinging out the sport beams until the lifter swings past the container if one side collides just grab the lifter by hand and slide it past the container then continue till the sport beams are in their outermost position and use beams to align the connectors to swing in use the beams until the center of mass from the container is above the trailer. After that, swing the support beams in while swinging the main beam out till the container touches the deck and align the containers. Uh, and you're done. Uh, getting the truck ready. Push or drive the truck to the trailer till it connects. Connect the blue cable and red hose. Lift the trailer stand. Uh, information the engine. Rev matches. Don't throttle up or down while shifting unless it is necessary. Important. Disconnect the lifter block before swinging out the beams. All right, so here we are with the cab over and trailer. Let's take a look at them separately. Nice paint job on there. Diesel only, which is good. Push buttons door there. And we have some supplies there. That's nice. That's good detail there. Uh, some tanks. We have a um, headache rack on there with our exhaust. Some uh, mud flaps. Have service and air brakes there. Our service and emergency lines there that's nice to see a little bit of a uh, little bit of a license plate there there's a trailer we have uh, ooh, what's that that would be the uh, trailer stand I should have read it <laughs> supplies I meant to open the supplies that's cool there tri axle all right very cool so let's go ahead and we'll open this one up as well some more supplies there all right and this is a supply rack here uh, looks like it Looks like there's supplies there as well. So go ahead and we'll uh, jump in the cab. We'll look at the front too. I didn't look at the front yet. So there's more detailing on the front there with paint. It's a good paint job there. Kind of rep reminiscent of the 80s uh, tractors here. Let's get in the driver's seat. All right, a lot of analog gauges in here. Very uh, large. We have a sleeper cab in here. We have hitch disconnect, uh, hitch ready connected. All right, just go through these really quick. Okay, so let's see. Uh, 80 steering WS throttle left right is indicator toggle. So there's the indicator. We have a little bit of a beep on that. We have that up front. And right, the rear, nothing up front, I don't see. We have right. Okay, uh, up, down, brake. Ooh, that's interesting. Up, down, brake, sticky. Uh, so WS the throttle sticky. Ooh, sticky throttle and sticky brake. That is interesting. Uh, space horn. One is park brake, two is upshift, three is downshift, four is low beam. So we have running lights. Nice, kind of the old school lighting. Um, they used to have a lot of lighting on some of these uh, princess rigs. Uh, high beam is five. Holy mother, we're not looking at that for too long. <laughs> Ignition, six, it starts up. All right, good. So let's go ahead and uh, we want to downshift. 
All right, there we go. We've got a reverse alarm. I did not. I literally touched nothing there, so it just reversed for me. Okay, what's going on here? A um, little bit concerned with the throttle and brake. So, okay, we are wowza. All right, let's see if I can't figure this out. So I don't know what's up with having a sticky throttle. That's interesting to me. That's very interesting to me. I'm going to have problems with that, I imagine. Okay, so let's go ahead and open the door. Get out and try to um, get all hooked up here. So we'll bring up the landing gear. Uh, we'll go ahead. I like the... Um, oh, that's neat. So IRL, often you'll have these uh, spring-loaded um, caddies for the airlines. So that's kind of a neat way to do it. I like that. That's neat. That's a little bit different. Good to see. Tool crate. Okay, that was the tool crate right there. Neat. So you have your tool crate. That's a neat detail on that. So I'm going to see how I like the transmission here. All right, so we'll upshift here. So two. All right, there's neutral. There's one. All right. Whoop, whoop. Did I hit something again? I didn't hit that. Okay, downshift to three. All right, let's start going forward. The brake is sticky, so I'm not. Sh I don't know about that at all. So, a little bit more conventional setup. I'd like to see. Mirrors are pretty good. I can see alongside the trailer. That one I can still see alongside the edge of the trailer. It's not bad. I'm going to cut it wide here, as I'm not sure it's turning radius. Keep it slow here, and I will look there. Watch my uh, mirror as I would IRL to be able to check my trailer, make sure I am pretty blind on that side. But I do have the mirror, so that is helpful. Wow, RPM is just slammed. I'm a, kind of afraid to upshift. Let's go ahead and upshift. Okay, so it rev matches. I don't know why. It, I don't know. A little bit different of a system. That's interesting to me. All right, I shift it up again. See how it handles a high center. Make sure we don't slam the bumper too bad on the back. Nope, pretty good. Says it loads on the left side, so I'm just going to quickly check the picks, make sure that is accurate. I am so confused with this braking system that it's it's not WS. It's it's on up down. That's very confusing to me. Uh, let's go ahead and I want to check, uh, verify. Yes, it does in fact load the left side. So just making sure I read that. Correctly. All right. The braking system is very interesting to me. So I'm going to see if I can. Uh, I'm going to try to reverse. I'm going to try with my mirror off the first. You know, those who did tractor trailer, beware. You have a real tractor tra driver here. So I will be. Uh, I will be critiquing this. Let's go down. All right. I want to reverse one. I want a nice slow reverse. So we're going to take the brakes off. This is very confusing to me. It like it automatically goes in reverse. I am jackknifed already. Okay. This is I am very confused with some of this braking and Okay. It is it is a handful, man. Uh we're gonna swing around. I'm gonna try to get it on the left side. I'm not gonna try to back this up. I like the detailing, the wood grain on the trailer is nice detail. The brakes and the throttle are kinda ruining it for me just because it's um you know, when I want to brake, I'm just instinctually, I'm going for S, you know. And then I want to be able to shift in reverse and just, you know, go forward, tap tap S. Uh, having to use up, down is just very strange to me. So I'm just keeping it nice and low. All right, we're going to go ahead. I'm just going to slam on this brake because uh, with this unconventional system, I don't want to have to do this more than once. Oh, there's, oh, oh, oh. So uh, that is kind of screwy a little bit for me. All right, I'm trying to put it in reverse. Okay, we're in reverse three. Oh, that's jumpy. All right. I've driven some jumpiness in my life, and this is a little bit on the high end of jumpy. Let's go into first uh, gear. All right, and I have to pretty much go in third person just because I can't uh, really... I can't really, um, I have no finesse here. Take the brakes off slowly. Okay, taking the brakes off slowly. 
Now I'm going to try to let it just gently idle me up there. All right, there we go. Let's hopefully, ugh. I'm just got very confused with how to drive this properly. Oh, geez, like that. It just slammed me forward. All right, we're going to keep the brake on there. Um, I'm going to go downshift in the neutral. All right, let's try here. What do we, hitch disconnect? We're going to leave that connected. All right, let's jump out. Go ahead, and I don't want to connect anything until I get this swung out. So I'm going to go ahead, and we'll try to, um, you know, not great on the workshop page, just the ability that I have to, like, go through the, I kind of have to go through a paragraph to read the instructions. You know, I tend to like to have a little bit, uh, I like to have the instructions, you know, in a list so that I can see them. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we can figure out how to do this. So we're going to grab the container lifter. All right, so we can follow this. So uh, AD is support beams A, so we'll go with that. All right, good. So that's that's better there. I don't have to, so this is pretty good. This is intuitive in the menu. Um, like you could have just put, you know, uh, grab handle and read the menu. The menu is good here. Oh, maybe it isn't all that great. Uh, I didn't read everything, so let's see. Uh, let's see, beam locks three. It, it does say that, but it is in the buried in the paragraphs. It's a little tough for me to grab it on the, um, you know, while I'm doing this. All right, so he did say if we have issues with alignment here to push them out manually. See if I can get this pushed out manually. All right, there we go. Let's hopefully get this moving over a little bit. All right, and I'm going to try to go align the front. I do kind of like these neat systems. This is neat. I do like a swing loader. That is a risk, you know, that it's a little bit more challenging, but I like that. That is, um, you know, that's that's a risk. That's innovative. That is not the easiest thing to get going there. So let's go. Uh, WS is uh, the supports. So I like that. Let's see. Left, right is main beam. Okay, so that's that. So we'll go up on this. We'll go out. Up. Let's go up. All right, there we go. I'm starting to get the hang of it a little bit here. Oh, see what what's going on up there? What did it grab? Shouldn't have grabbed anything. I don't know what I'm grabbing. Okay, something's tipping me here. All right, let's try to get this figured out here. So I want to go down on the supports. So WS, what is this grabbing? Okay, there we go. How do I get the support beam down? AD, okay, there's, ooh, what's going on here? All right, so there we're pretty aligned. I'm trying to get the support down. So AD. Okay. Trailer, uh, con, okay. Let's do beam lock, uh, container lock, connector two. All right, let me go energize this. I think we're close to being ready here. Now let's see if these are disconnected, so I'll check them. Uh, release connector is true, so we got to go try to energize those. I don't know what these supports are supposed to be doing. I've tried to get them to the ground. I just am struggling to get them there. Okay. So it did, uh, let's try the other one for the front. Okay. Let's go see if I can't get the front to connect. I'll check on it really quickly. It's very. It's a very neat system. Release is false, so we should be able to grab this. I just need to push it. All right, good. I do like the sling loader a lot. Sling loaders are how they are IRL. Uh, there's a bunch of sling loaders IRL. I do think that's neat. It's just taking me a minute to figure it out. I don't mind running around and connecting it manually. You'd be doing this IRL. You'd be out there manually connecting these. Uh, you know, that's that's real life. You know, some are chain. A lot of them are chains. They would chain the bottom of the connector. I'm not sure what this leg is doing. That's kind of interesting to me. I'm going to try to put it on the ground now that I have this connected. All right, so the leg is going down. Perfect. So that's actually not too bad now. I just couldn't really do it until those um, the bottom sections were attached. So this is really cool. I like this a lot. The The legs going down, uh, the support legs of it, that is really neat. I do like this loading system. Uh, there's a little bit more manual. I tend to like the manual systems because it lets me as an operator get good at it, you know. There's a sense of accomplishment where you have to do it yourself. Um, you know, if, if the system does it all yourself, all itself, uh, you don't really get that sense of accomplishment. So I kind of, I do like that quite a bit, so. 
I do like this system here. Let's go. Uh, we want to do trailer. Connect is one. Work light is four. Okay, ooh, a little bright. Uh, let's check on this connecting to the trailer. So let's see. Uh, release connector is false. So those do want to grab. I don't know how we're going to get it to grab, though. Do I have to drop it? I hope I don't have to drop it. Uh, let's just see. Maybe bring the uh, support legs up. Let's try that. Okay, yes. So bring the support legs up. That will get it into position a little bit better. Okay, good. So that was it right there. So that brings that final segment down. There we go. I'm trying to get this to connect. I don't know why it's not grabbing. Okay. Let's try to get that on there. And All right, there we go. Let's fold that up. Nice. So it is It is pretty intuitive. you got to kind of get it. I'm just curious why I'm not able to attach this to the trailer. I might have to disconnect it. Let's see. Release connector false. Okay, so that wants to grab. So let's try to disconnect it from here. So um, two. Okay, there we go. We have to detach the other ones. That's fine. All right, so I really do like that loading mechanism. It looks really good. I like the supports. That makes sense to me. That's really cool. I like the loading mechanism a lot. You know, that's – oh, I'm in the wrong seat. Let's go ahead and grab it. I'm not a fan of this um, – of the – just the driving controls are very – are very um, non-conventional, put it that way. So I have to, like, take the brake off with the up arrow. And now I'm ready to drive shift and with two. And then it, it's sticky. I just, I don't know, that's very weird to me. Yeah, that's just, that's just strange to me. I don't know. See how it drives. Drives well. Happy with how it drives. I like the triaxle on there. I like the detailing of it. Really good detailing on the trailer. You know, tractor kind of looks like an old freight liner, like it's supposed to. I like the AC unit on the roof. Got a couple air horns up there, some spots. I'd probably, personally, I would dim down these lights. Like, if I go high beam on here, it is blinding. So, like, I would do additive and just lower that down. Like, the work lights on there, I found to be very bright. Like, if I go high beam, um, it's very, uh, very bright on there. So, but it's handling the hill fine. You know, I'm not really playing with the shifting gears, and the reason is I'm afraid that if I, uh, I'm afraid that if I need a slam of the brakes to go, so I don't go off this cliff, that I am gonna screw up pressing the uh, the up down arrows. So just a little bit unconventional for me. Okay, we're starting to. Oh, nope, we're all right. I thought we were bogging down for a second, but we're good. But I really like the design of the lifting system on the on the trailer. That's really neat. You know, the trailer was very stable. I have one myself, and this was a lot more stable than mine. You know, so that uh, that gives me some ideas. You know, it's always nice when I can review a build and I get some cool ideas and some inspiration. I really like the loading mechanism. I wanted to try a sling myself at some point. That's really cool to have a sling on there. All right. I'm going to try to slow down here. Shift down. Let the gears help me get down this hill. Because that's what you'd be doing IRL is, you know, truck's gears are meant for truck. And I like that they did not make this a sports car. You know, it says right in the description, not a sports car. You know, I haven't had any that really scream like, oh, I'm a sports car masquerading as a truck. You know, I do like that it rev matches the gears. That's neat. I just wish that it had a more conventional, uh, you know, Acceleration brake. But it is rev match and neat. Handles really well though. It's handling well. Like I'm trying to get it I'm trying to get this trailer to slide out a little bit here. And I can't. So that's nice. It's it's handling really well. Alright, let's go up in here and brakes. Like I'm um ooh, there we go. Okay. Whew. The brakes terrify me. <laughs> they really do. The one thing you want to always work in a in a truck, or you want to know what your brakes are. I like the uh, movable shift knobs, neat. All right, all right, we are set there. 
All right, good. So let's try to unload this here. So let's grab, it's going to load the left, unload to the left. So we'll grab on the handle here. All right, so I'm going to switch from, it's pretty intuitive once you get it here. It's not bad. So uh, I want to disconnect the trailer and connect the beams. There we go. Okay, they grabbed four and a half. They did. Okay, so I want to go AD. Up oh, uh, that, yeah. All right, so WS, WS. Okay, so I'm interested how this is going to work. Oh, okay. A uh, little bit. Ugh, I'm I'm a little confused with this here, because I'm trying to get these support legs down on the ground here. So come on, man, don't do it. Um, all right. So, let's see. Okay, I want to keep that down. I want to go down on this. So I want to go down on this. I think as I'm going left. Okay. Uh, see. Okay, there we go. I've got it now. So I'm pressing down and right to help the supports go down. Okay. A little bit slippery. Okay. Once I get the support legs down, we're good. It's just a little bit of trying to figure that out. But um, there we go. I do like that. That. Uh, a little bit. I would probably put a separate mechanism on for the legs, but it's uh, it's not too bad. I'm get I you know I'm getting the hang of it. I am getting the hang of it. It's um, you know the the break on up down was it wasn't great for me. Um, you know a little bit fearful on that. Um, but uh, I really like the loading mechanism a lot. I like the detailing on the trailer with the supply boxes and the crate in the front. But a really neat and innovative uh, loading mechanism. It was good to see a tractor trailer. Thanks for submitting, and we'll move on to the next one. Right, and the next build is the M17K13 self-loading container truck. So we have no uh, we have no thumbnail there at all. We have this one picture here that says L bomb on it, and by Omar bin Ghazali, Bandicamp.com. Uh, hop in and go use the up button to raise the plate, line up with the container, or hook up winches. It will grab and closes, raise the grabber, fold down, and drive off. So uh, a little bit more on the simple side of the workshop pages there. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, this has some interesting behavior on spawning, so let's spawn it in together here. It has a counterweight that goes over the side, and it raises up, which is interesting uh, to make sure that it doesn't tip over. I don't know why it's doing it right now. Uh, kind of a camo paint job here. Very, very tall. What's that? I don't know what that is. Let's see. Um, nope. It says hood on there, so let's open it, crack it, and do the hood. Uh, did it actually do anything? Let's see. Uh, I turned it on did nothing. Okay. Uh, no instructions whatsoever on the workshop page, so keep that in mind. Uh, up, down, winch in, winch out, container grabber, hard points, okay, running lights, electric cable, fuel hose there, some tall wheels, a bunch of clipping, a little bit of clipping on here, yeah, a bunch of clipping on there. All right, so no real instructions, so we shall see if I can figure this out. Okay, that we are driving from the left here, as I'm accustomed, jump in. All right, so we have a little bit of instruction here on the H menu, RPS, miles an hour, gear, shift, slip, slate, okay. Uh, temp, start, uh, cab lights. Uh, the cab lights does not work. Okay. Start that up. Uh, up, down is gear, seven, eight, low gear, okay. Uh, one's reverse, two's neutral, three light blinkers. I don't know what we're doing with the back table there. Let's see if we can get that to stow because I would like to... Um, like to drive here. All right, there we go. All right, let's see if we can't drive here. So let's shut that door. Uh, reverse neutrals to. Okay. Okie dokie. We have instant steering. I'm at full right lock here. All right. We went with the biggest wheels we could put on this. What's going on here? Reverse is one. Okay. We have reverse lights? No. Okay. That is an interesting uh, 30 RPS there. All right. Let's try to shift up here. There we go. Get a little bit of a speed there. All right, so the table is on our left side, so I need to go load from the left. 
All right, let's downshift a little bit here. All right. All right let's try to reverse in and uh, get lined up here. Uh, very basic instructions here. I will see what I can do. All right, let's go ahead and we'll go up. All right. All right, and let's see what we can do here. Um, What am I supposed to be doing here? Okay, use the up button to raise the plate. Line up with the container or hook up winches. Uh, it will grab when closes. Okay, uh, raise the grabber, fold down, drive up. All right, let's see. Um, we're not that close, so let's see. Are there any ropes? We have ropes here. Okay. So let's try to rope this sucker. Do I have another rope? Uh, it might be in the back. Let's see if there's one on the rear. Uh, that's cable. Do we have a second rope? I do not see a second rope. Uh, it could be here, but uh, there is no instructions on the workshop page. So there's another rope there. Okay. Let's see what we can do here. All right. Let's go ahead and try to raise this up. Okay, there we go. All right, let's go ahead and uh, we'll try to read. It will grab when closes. Okay, uh, raise the grabber. Okay. Okay, down. Okay, what's going on here? Okay, there is. Never mind. I, I gotta. This is it here. Uh, container grabber move. Okay. Running light. Detach heart. Okay. Rate container grabber move. Okay, that slides it up. Gotcha. All right, now we need to go down. Okay. So that's interesting. It puts it on its side. That is interesting. That's different. I hope there's nothing fragile in that container that will break or um, a bunch of liquids <laughs> that will get uh, destroyed. Okay, we're still in reverse. All right, let's get going forward here. All right. The mechanics are not going to like that this needs an oil change every 10 miles. Um, I do like the, as much as it is a little bit uh, weird that you would put the container inside because you would break everything that's in there, um, it is interesting. It's definitely a different design. The instant steering, I've never been a fan of instant steering. You know, I don't, I see it on some builds. I don't know why there's instant steering. Oh, I accidentally hit one. What was that? Did it lower the front? I don't know. Maybe it was just my perception was weird. All right, let's try to drive this from first person here a little bit. Holy shit. All right, that's not good. All right, okay, so let's try to start this up. All right, let's go one reverse. I'm going to go in third person for this. I'm trying to, the gearing, I'm trying to not go in too high of a gear here. Please stay on the road. Please stay on the road. Thank you. All right, hand, let's handle on the road, all right. All right, I'm going to upshift. Okay. It says, uh, what? I don't know what's going on here. Not sure what's going on there. Okay, it's like it's it's faster in fourth gear. Whoa, whoa, do not crash again, please. Prayer. There we go. Alright. We'll blame the snowy roads for that. Generally as you go higher in the gears, it will go um faster.
All right, so let's go ahead and we'll stop. Uh, let's, let's see. Check that H menu again here. I don't see uh, what's that? Pop hood. Okay. So we gotta we gotta unlock the hood and pop it there. It's in there again. No instructions on the workshop page. So uh, you know we we work with what we have here. All right, let's try to do this. Um, Right, down. Oh, shit. Nope. Up. Okay. Uh, where is it? Container grab or move. Okay, that's the one. All right. So, uh, definitely an interesting design. Um, just didn't, you know, its turning radius is quite large, uh, bordering ludicrous. Um, and that's what, kind of why I had the crashes. I was trying to do it in first person, and I just couldn't make the turn. I was going to have to do a three-point turn. So definitely oversized on the wheels. I'd kind of shrink it down, make it a little bit smaller so you can have a better turning radius. Um, you know, but definitely a good effort. I do, uh, you know, as, as unconventional as this is, and you d destroy every piece of cargo that's in that, this is kind of a cool loading system. It has the sliding counterweights neat. Uh, the side table is neat. I wouldn't necessarily use it for containers just because you'd be tipping a container outside. But uh, it is kind of an interesting and different design. It works uh, pretty well. So kind of a neat design there. I think the mechanics of that works well. Um, but, yeah, neat build, and thanks for submitting. And the next build is the Container Hauler Captain Build Challenge. Uh, we have a little bit of an edited picture there. Nice to see. A little bit more, like, if you if you kind of take some screenshots, getting rid of some of this, that kind of dresses it up a little bit. You can see your H menus on. You know, that's kind of nice to see. Get a little bit of a use the use the camera, so you're not getting some of this stuff. This is uh, nice and helpful to get some good pictures of it. But definitely a nice variety of pictures. Definitely a step up from last one. By Boo96, uh, a little bit. Of, we're on a basic um, kick here for a workshop page. Is a six-cylinder with a six-speed manual transmission, capable of doing 90 plus miles an hour, fully loaded. Has a table-style loading system with all custom microcontrollers. If there is one you like, all you uh, if if there is one you all like, you're free to take it and use it. No credit needed. Has adjustable thermostat as well as sleeper cab for those long trips that take a couple day. Uh, holds 159 plus gallons of fuel, 6x6 with all-wheel drive. Also has an auto backup generator just in case power gets low, but I haven't had an issue with that uh, testing. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so here we are with the uh, Boo 96s. A little nice detail on the grill there. We have some lighting in there for the... Um, the paintable indicator, some more there. Let's see, toggle button there. We have a uh, inspection light, it appears. So nice to see an opening hood. We have a uh, retract table, extend table, raise table, lower table, retract gripper, extend gripper, release table locks, RP RPS. Oh, probably for the generator. Temp bat gen, yep, it says it does have a generator. Uh, fluid hose anchor there. Some detailing on here with some uh, DOT tape on there. Some lighting on the side, some glamour lighting on there. All right, so let's see, does this open? Nope, that just looks like painted. That's cool. All right, good. We are right hand drive or left hand drive? Appears we are Americano in style on that. Let's jump in. Some side pipes. Uh, RPM, MPH, fuel a gallon, bat, and temp. We have parking brake, key button. I don't know what this is. This is zero, and I don't know what that is. Okay, we have a sleeper in there. We have lights. Okay. All lights all around, all around. We have cab light. So there's a domer. Work light. Ooh, good lord. Um, those are cool. I like that effect. That's neat. Just blinded me just a hair. <laughs> uh, some nice bright work lights in the rear. I'm going to try not to look at that. A spot on the front. That's front spots. Nice. Okay, let's see what's that. Cab temp. Uh, desired temp. There's your thermostat, so that's a cool feature to have. I like that. Now we start. Okay, steering's AD, WS throttle up, down is gear. Space is horn. It's an interesting horn. One is park brake. Let's shut that off. Good. Hazards are two. Let's take a look at that. All right. Ooh, pink. Uh, a little bit of pinky in the back there. All right, good. Let's see. Uh, brights are three. All right, good. Good to see. All right, let's uh, shift up. Okay, that's gear. Uh, that's gear indicator there. A little bit of a stall there, but I think we're all right now. I'm just going to take it a wide swing here. Uh, I can see the rear axles are very rearward. Um, the axles in the rear are all the way back. That's going to give us a really wide turn circle. That's why I kind of cut it wide. 
One of the reasons I like tractor trailer IRL is you can actually turn tighter in tractor trailer sometimes. Well, it depends. But you can often turn tighter tractor trailer because you can jackknife it and pull the trailer around. But let's go ahead. I'm going to do a little bit of maneuvering in here. Push my luck. Not like I haven't had to use a fire extinguisher already today. All right, let's go ahead. Uh, no mirrors to speak of. So I'm having to do third person, which is not my favorite. You know, it's... It's nice if I can do third person, but when I'm kind of forced to do it, you know, I kind of have to. It's nice to have some mirrors, uh, you know, some some of your peers put in effort on that, so it's nice to see as well. Brakes, brakes, brakes. I do like having a conventional drive system, though, that I can uh, quickly get the hang of, so. A little bit of, it's, it keeps restarting the engine, so we have a little bit of stall there, but not a big deal. Go ahead and put it in first. Brake is on, or I'm sorry, neutral. All right, let's go ahead and get this going here. So we'll go ahead and we will raise the table. Uh, let's see. Release table locks. Oop, sorry, that was me not reading. Again, the workshop page, very basic. So um, kind of have to go with the information I have here. All right, did I get too close is the question. Don't know if I got too close. Let's, let's pull forward just a hair. Make sure I didn't get too close. All right, that appears to be, let's, okay, it's the table slide. It's a full sliding table like a tow truck. So that makes sense. So this works like a tow truck, I think. So let's go ahead, put that there. Let's go neutral. All right, so we slide the whole table. So that's interesting. Uh, extend gripper and extend table. Yep, so it's a sliding table like you'd see on a fork, on a um, tow truck. Okay, why is it, re why is it bringing itself back up? Uh, extend table. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and we'll extend the gripper. So that's the carriage there. All right, nice. So, yeah, this is a full sliding table like you'd see on a uh, tow truck, which is kind of neat to see. This is the first one of those we've seen. So let's go ahead and extend the table. Oh, jeez. I meant I extended the wrong thing. I meant to just do the gripper. I did the table. So that was a me problem. All right, we'll retract the table. There we go. And we'll lower. Oh, 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 don't. The, it's, it, the retract is kind of sliding on its own. I don't know why that's sliding on its own. I am at a loss. Okay, let's go try to lock this table up before there's great sadness in all the land. There we go. Okay, so it's locked up now. All right, good. Uh, so let's go ahead and we'll jump in. We shall uh, extinguish the brake and get getting. So probably a little bit of tuning on that auto clutch. Uh, you know, a little bit of work on that would be nice. Oh, there we go. I forgot, this has a long wheelbase. The longer your wheelbase, the longer your, uh, your uh, turning circle is going to be. But it's driving nicely. Not having any issues. We're in uh, first gear. Yeah. Seems like it has some really long gears. You know, we're able to do 32 in second gear. It's a little bit more of a car's transmission, but it's working, you know. So that's the main thing for me. It's working. All right, let's take this turn. Again, you know, as long as you know to expect, uh, you're going to have a wide, like, even the last build, the last build, because of those enormous tires, um, and, you know, we really couldn't turn very tight. Even though this has a long wheelbase, you know, still able to manage the road pretty well. You know, as a tractor-trailer driver, you know, I kind of know, I know where to look, and I know where I need to make my turns, so it's not too bad. You know, this is, even with the long wheelbase, this is fine. But uh, drives nicely. It's uh, restrained and it's not um, not out of hand. It's not uh, giving me any problems. I do like the sliding table. That's the you know it's another piece of articulation. So even though there was a little bit of an issue with it sliding on its own, um, that's some extra work. That's some extra potential. Uh, you know some physics bugs there, and so you're willing to uh, do that. So it's nice to see that extra effort there on trying a sliding table. So. They're, they can be challenging to do, so it was nice to see you, you uh, did a sliding table on this. But full sliding table, I, you know, be nice to put a little bit more in your workshop page. That way, you know, you explain to people what's going on. There's a little bit less guesswork. All right, so here we are arriving at the Dray Motors Airport, and we'll unload. So uh, drives really nicely. I have no complaints with the driving there. All right, let's go ahead. We'll set the brake and jump on and out. All right, let's go ahead, and I need to unlock the table. See, 
See it slide on its own, not really doing anything. Even if I press um, retract table, it goes on out. So it'd be cool if I, you fix that. That would be kind of nice. Otherwise, you know. Okay, ooh, that's me. So the nice thing with a sliding table is I'll kind of talk the benefits of a sliding table. This is the benefits of a sliding table. You notice the angle is very low. And so that's the whole benefit of a sliding table is you, uh, you know, you can get that angle really low. So, for example, for loading cars, you can get a car on because the angle is low. You're not going to scrape your bumper. So that's kind of nice to see. All right, let's go ahead and slide that on out. All right, nice. And let's see. That's table lock. So I have to go and detach the container from here. Not a big deal. Uh, let's see what's up here. We have winch stuff. Yep, winch stuff there. So that's neat. What's up there? Uh, connect. So some more stuff there. Okay, cool. So this is a really neat build. I do like the sliding table. That was uh, definitely some extra work to do that. And it was good to see. Thanks for submitting. All right, and the next build is the Nordent HCM-12. So... You know, a little bit of basic of a thumbnail compared to your competitors here. We have a little bit of a video here. We're not going to go ahead and play that. Uh, some nice pictures here. I do like the twin and, uh, steer axles on that. Tilt cab, cab over by Foxy. This vehicle was made for my Build Challenge Hotel. Uh, the HCM12 is a container mover with a 7-speed manual transmission, uh, like a manual, uh, with a top speed of 90-plus kilometers an hour, 12-cylinder engine, 7-speed manual, 90-plus uh, kilometers an hour, foldable cabin, working uh, working lights, 8-wheel drive, and honking horn. All right, so here we are with the Nord. Let's go ahead, and we have door there. Uh, a lot of glass there. A little bit basic on the front compared to some of the other ones. Let's see, just the door there. Uh, batteries in the back, some equipment. Uh, there's the cab tilt. Tilting up that cab there. Let's see, we have kind of a, a good uh, smallish engine. It's good for a cab over. It makes it a little bit easier. We have electronics there. All right, let's go ahead and close that. A lot of fuel there. Uh, carriage up, down. Okay, that's all our carriage information there. A little bit basic on the bumper here. Could use some paint. Could use some detailing on that. A little bit basic on the detailing compared to the other competitors. Uh, everybody is embracing the left-hand drive, I see. Let's go ahead and uh, jump on in. Uh, AD steering, WS is throttle brake. Up, down is shifters. Space of the horn, six is engine. We'll start that engine up. Uh, we have headlights. We have running, and we have front beams. We have uh, high beam right there. All right, good. We have engine temp, fuel, RPS, uh, speed, kilometers, gear. Uh, park brake release is off. Okay, we have mirrors. I can actually see down the side of my vehicle, which is very convenient. That's nice to see. We have dome light. We have night light. Okay, very cool. So let's go ahead and we'll release the park brake, and we'll get getting. A little bit jumpy of a throttle. But uh, it's not bad. It's not like I'm taking off. It's not like I'm panicking and have a slam of the brakes. Not a bad steering circle. I can steer um, uh, within a reasonable amount of space. I didn't have to cut it wide on that one. So let's see. This one is a rear loader. A little bit jumpy of a throttle, but it's not terrible. Uh, let's see. If I can line up with the mirror, that's always a good sign. Not that we need a backup alarm, but it is a nice, easy way to always tell you're in reverse. That's one other thing I love about a backup alarm is, you know, you click in a reverse, you don't even have to look. You just hear the beeps, beeps. Beeps, beeps from your sheeps. All right, let's go back it up. And we'll just bump it. You know, there's nothing wrong with kissing the trailer or kissing a container a little bit. I bumped a couple in my day. All right, let's go ahead, and we want to slide the carriage. Oop, uh, that's carriage out, huh? That appears to be up to me. Down, okay. Carriage in, okay. Carriage up, okay. What is going on here? Okay, that slides. Okay, it barely slides on that axis. I got it. Okay. Uh, release grippers, carriage release. Okay, carriage release. I bet that's what the problem was. Okay, carriage release. There is n nothing really on the workshop page, so it's kind of... Having to guess a little bit. Okay, good. That's fine. We'll, rubbing's racing. We will push a little bit. I have no problem pushing. 
you do have to kind of manhandle these things IRL a little bit anyway, so it is not unfamiliar to me to have to push containers around the rail yard. Okay. Okay, that's up. Let's go carriage uh, in. There we go. Slides right on. So uh, no issues here. Oh, holy mother. That was just it snapping. One thing I tend to like to do is when I'm moving it, it will automatically uh, de it will get rid of the grippers there. That way, um, okay, carriage in. Uh, let's see. Down, up, okay. Okay, what was it, mother? What was it, mother? Okay, let's uh, try to, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Most of this is me. Carriage release. All right, there we go. Gripper brake is on. All right. Not too bad there. I don't know if I can slide that in, but we're on. All right, let's get getting. So let's go ahead and release the brake. Let's get in first. So not it's you know it's not that bad of a turning circle. Definitely having the twin steer axles. Like I went hard lock there, and you can see I had no problem getting the turn going. Third gear here. Hit this hill in third. You know, the container's sitting back a little bit, but it's not bad. That's when you want a bumper. That's a, that's a good way to get decapitated IRL is having a trailer hang off, have a container hang off the back of there. If you were to rear end this truck, you would, um, you would be without a hat. Let's put it that way. All right. So it's, it has a pretty good steering, uh, turning radius. So I'm not, whoa, a little bit. I don't think it was actually leaning all that much, but it gave me the perception of lean, so I was kind of a little bit freaked, but that was just a me. I think it was fine. We didn't have any real rollover there. Not too much body roll, which is good. All right, nice. So uh, driving well. It's not scaring me. Engine's nice and calm and sedate. I don't have to listen to it screaming in my ear. That's nice. You know, a truck usually get a nice lub 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 lub. It's a big diesel. You know, it's not a, not a sports car. It's not a lawnmower. It's not a weed whacker. You know, so that's nice to hear. We're gonna downshift. See how it handles a little bit of engine braking. Nice, sedate going down the hill. No problem. I'm on the road the whole time. No real problems of uh, any roadway departures. There we go. Steers beautifully. Really nicely st steering. You know, it's not it's not wobbly. It definitely seems like it has a stability system. Yeah, it's nice. It uh, drives really well. Really good handling on this one. Downshift us into uh, into the stop nicely. We'll put the brake on. Let's unload the payload and uh, yeah, drove really really nicely. Very nice driving on there. Let's go ahead and release the gripper brakes. Uh, we'll do carriage release, push it out. There we go. Tips itself nicely. Let's go down. There we go. All right, let's go ahead, and we will do connector release up and in. All right, so uh, really nice driving on this one. This one drives really nicely. Uh, the attachment mechanism is a little bit unconventional, but it works really, really well. So uh, I like it. I like the twin steer axles. Could use a little bit more detailing, but... Overall, a really cool build, and uh, thank you for sharing it. Captain Cockrell's Challenge Submission by uh, Eddie W. Uh, container hauler, efficient and simple. I like the thumbnail. I like the uh, coloring on it. Very cool thumbnail there. Have some good pictures here. A little bit of Stormworks branding on there. Nicely themed. I like the look of it. It looks really cool by Addy. Uh, welcome. This is my welcome. This is my humble creation for Captain Cockrell's Challenge. Very simple and efficient design with dedicated... Dedication on user friendliness. Uh, technical parameters of this vehicle uh, naturally aspirated 16 cylinder engine, 15 RPS limit, 11 speed auto trans, max speed 80 meters per second. Holy mother. That is that is, uh, that is not a truck speed right there. That's overly fast. Uh, for, you know, there's this, this size price 32K, fuel 1.4, battery, even though the capacity is great, if not moving, it'll eventually run out. Okay. Um, assistance and system automatic engine startup. Just hop in and go. Auto hold keeps the vehicle in place. Uh, stationary while on a hill. That is neat. Um, automatic door control. Automatic blinkers. Sound assistance. Uh, progressive steering by speed. ABS. Uh, features. Equipment to recover from any crash. Bed to skip time. Question mark. 
Uh, let's have a look at the seat buttons. Reverse, one is pretty self-explanatory, shifts into reverse. Uh, so you have 11 reverse gears. Low gear, and it gauges the low gear. Unnecessary for most case. Activated if you're pulling and saying load. Turns off once it reaches 11th gear. Uh, manual, shifting up. Uh, shifting with up-down, the transmission is capable of CVT, direct drive. You can enable this function by shifting your 11th gear. If you don't need the full torque or you're annoyed with the constant shifting, engine is fully capable of accelerating. Uh, transport autopilot. When transporting a container by railroad bridges, it's very useful to enable this. You must uh, be on the bridge. Once enabled, keep distance, so it keeps you centered on the bridge. Uh, Terminate. Okay. Uh, 4 by 6 steering disables rear axle steering up uh, unload uh, unload mechanism. Note, I have made some tweaks, but sometimes the rails get stuck. That's a storm mark thing. I'm not worried about that. Triggers handbrake. Good to mention stuff. Transmission sometimes gets stuck between two gears. If that happens, just switch to manual. Please drive responsibly. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, here we are with the uh, Eddie's truck. Holy mother. The lights start on. So I'm interested with that. Uh, we have all the lights on to start with. Very cool grill. I like the grill detailing. I like the branding on there. Really nice and cool. Very modern grill there. Cool use of the sonar blocks there. We have an Addy license plate. So that's some cool branding. I like that. Those are the distance sensors for the auto steer there. Curious why uh, the lights are on. Tools. Let's see. Unlock. Okay. Um, not sure what's up with that. A little bit of a shimmer there on the XML. Some nice detailing here on the side lights. Some torches there. What's that? Unload. It is having a shake fest. So hopefully we don't have any issues. This is interesting using the um, using these uh, pie segments. That's interesting. Like the little indicator lights there. Exhaust on the side. Very European. I'm going to try to look down while I go across the lights so I don't uh, have corneal uh Degeneration. Let's see. We have a, a sleeper in here. Have a reverse cam, which is nice. Interior lights. Uh, back work lights. Holy mother, that's bright. Let's see. Battery, fuel, handbrake, reverse, uh, dial. Okay. Uh, I would assume speedometer. Uh, gear is first gear, manual, uh, temp. Up down is manual. Okay. One is reverse, two low, three manual. Uh, four is transport autopilot. Uh, four by six is five, and unload is six. All right, so it says it starts right when we jump in, and we can tell by RPS that that is what it's doing. Let's let's keep it in this mode. It's a little bit fast for me. It kind of feels like a car. Holy shit. Okay. I uh, had a little bit of a scare there for a second. I thought we were going right into the woods. Holy Jesus. Okay, so this is not a truck. This is a car. Okay. Keep that in mind. So we are going to go in manual mode. Not a fan of my trucks driving like cars. So let's see. What gear are we in? First gear. Holy mother. So, yeah, it still kind of drives like a truck even in uh, that. Let's go reverse. All right. We have a nice reverse camera, which is uh, convenient. So that's really convenient to get lined up. Now right, let's look. Uh, no mirrors to speak of. That would be kind of cool to have some mirrors. All right. There we go. So that's our backup alarm. Uh, let's go ahead and put the uh, handbrake back on. So let's see, where is that? I have already forgotten. Space. Okay, this space. Uh, let's go ahead and take it out of reverse so I don't hear the beeps and the beeps. Doors are automatic. Um, okay, so this is automatic. Uh, a little bit cartoony and fast, but uh, it is kind of cool that it is automatic. Check out some of these brake lights while we're back here. I do like the cab over design. I like the little deflector there. It's very, it you know, it's kind of a tight package. I do like all the side design there and how it lines up perfectly with the container. Uh, nicely done there. I like that. All right, let's go ahead and take the handbrake off. Okay, this is very car-like in its um, driving. You got that instant steering. So, yeah, it's banging off the rev limiter there. Let's go ahead and I'm going to shift up. Yeah, I definitely like manual mode here more. It behaves like a truck for me, you know. Yeah, I definitely like manual mode more. I can control my speed. That's a big thing in trucks is controlling your speed. You know, you don't want to get a truck going uncontrollably fast. You know, you want to be able to 
take your turn, not worry about it. You know, like I'm slowing down. Oh, holy shit. I'm slowing down there. So, like, I was trying to slow down into my turn there. So I didn't smash the mountain. And I had to downshift to do it. Um, it because it's the it's a little bit jumpy on the uh, RPS. You know, we're, we're pegged at 14. So as soon as it wants to give it some clutch, it just jumps into gear. And it just jumps forward. So, holy jeez. A little bit jumpy there when I shift gears. But a little bit car-like. Yeah. But it, it definitely is better, I think, in manual for myself. I can control my speed better. And, and uh, like, I'm engine braking on the way down this hill. But, yeah, top speed is a little bit ludicrous. But, um, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of it banging off the red rev limiter like that. But it drives well, you know, a little bit jumpy, a little bit car-like, uh, you know, that's not my favorite, but it looks really cool. I like the uh, exterior design work in there. I'd like to see some mirrors on there. You know, some side mirrors would be kind of cool to see. Uh, really cool grill detailing. I don't know why the lights were on when I started. That's interesting, but uh, not a big deal. Let's go ahead and put the brake on. Let's jump on out, and let's unload this bad John. Holy Jesus. Got to get out of the way there, or else you're going to get crushed to death. All right, so very cool build. I really like the detailing on the uh, exterior. It was really cool there. So really cool build, and thanks for minute. All right, and the next build is uh, two parts that I will assemble together. So it's the Triple C TT self-loading container trailer TTS. So nice, uh, nice picture here. I like this thumbnail. Some good detailing on there. Goes along with the Scania. This is by Citros. So here are the uh, parts. Triple uh, C TT self-loading container trailer uh, trailer for the my challenge hotel simple and ease of use trailer that can load one container. I uh, hope you like it. Enjoy specs um, container one TTS mass and cost operation manual. Uh, this is neat. Uh, if you use this trailer with my Scania, which we will R480, then you'll want to have uh, about three meter long light cord. This is a panel. Uh, right at the winch that lets you operate it. Uh, here's a video to demonstrate how to load and offload containers. Button layout, carriage forward, uh, back, pickup arm, down, and up. Connector um, release, I would say, is five. So that's cool to have a kind of little black and white manual there. I like that. Uh, if it twists like this, all you need to do is press the carriage connector release. Uh, then hold pickup arm while pressing carriage connector release, and it should be fixed. Okay, so if it binds up. Landing gear. Uh, we can gear up, gear down, and then we have the crank. If you want to raise the gear, press gear up, hand crank, gear down, hand cranks. So that makes sense. I like the little branding on that. And please do not re-upload. Re nice picture here. I really like that picture. That's a cool one there. Some nice uh, detailing here on these picks here. Very cool, very cool. A little man there sleeping in his bed. All right, then there it is going up the hell hill there on uh, Donk. All right, the Scania R480. Here's my submission for my challenge. This is, uh, again, by Citrus. Um, this truck is mainly based off the uh, R480 2009 model, but it's not really a 101. Built comes equipped with a uh, OptiCruise 12-speed gearbox and handles pretty good. I would say hopefully you like and enjoy Challenge Hotel. That's the YouTube for the Vidya. Max speed is 68 miles an hour, a nice reasonable truck speed. Uh, fuel tank, 650 liters, 12.7 uh, inline, 6 diesel, OptiCruise 12, 5th wheel TTS, 1600 mass, and 31 uh, thou. Operation manual, safety check, very important to check tire pressure, light indicator, brakes, windscreen, wipers, and oil level. Uh, battery, B-R-E-A-K-E-R, -E on the vehicle left side, uh, locate a red switch, that's the battery breaker. Uh, so we'll uh, keep an eye for that, for the battery breaker. Uh, startup, I'm sorry, but if you can't figure out how to start this, most likely under the age of three, make sure the battery breaker is on position and then turn uh, the start key. So button layout, cool to see this. Connect trailer with cable from winch. Left indicator, right indicator, light mode indicator, park brake. Uh, I won't go through all these, but this is a lot of really good detailing in here and uh, nice cool Lua screen here. So a lot of good detailing in there. We should be able to uh, intuit much of that as we get in there. Uh, release parking brake, release trailer brake, uh, retarder, which is the um, Jake brake. 
in Europe. Uh, trailer brake, enable 6x6 bumper spots, bleed air tanks, and uh, grill LEDs. This has air brakes, I believe. Maintenance, to tilt the cab, unlatch 3, then hold 1 until cab is tilted. To tilt back down, latch 3 and hold 2 until cab is lowered. Uh, please do not re-upload. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, and here is the Scania all put together. So really, really good detailing on this. I like the look of this. This looks really uh, very much like a Scania. This is one of my favorite models of Scania. I like the grill detail. The Scania is nice and crisp. Very, very well done in the writing there. Uh, really good detailing on the lighting here. We have 45, um, you know, paintable indicators on there. That's some good work on that. Nice detailing on here. More 45s on there. I like the paint job. This nice uh, dark paint job is cool. Looks like there's some shadowing and shading in there. It looks really cool. I like the detail. This is a really neat section here. I like that a lot. Really good cabin detail. You know, the way that these cabs work IRL is they are floating cabs. So the cab is actually on airbags, and that's some of the main suspension for the driver. And then you have the actual uh, frame. So you can kind of see that looks like it's a floating cab. Really cool work on there. So neat. So let's go ahead, and we have this uh, red. That's the battery breaker right there. So that we needed to uh, click on to start going. All right, I'm interested in seeing the cab tilt. So we have uh, cab tilt four there. So it says maintenance to tilt, unlatch three. Okay. So let's see, cab lock, cab lock. Okay, good. And then it says go up. So that will tilt the cab forward. I like it's nice and slow. These are usually hydraulic or electric actuators. So that's kind of nice. To see it a little bit slow, it's not instant, like drops the cab, bangs the vehicle around. I like to see that. Uh, good detailing on the motor. You know, if you're going to see the motor, it should be detailed. It looks nice and detailed there. A little bit of a shimmer. Uh, not right there, but not bad. I like the deck plate. There's some really good deck plate work. I always struggle myself to get a deck plate that doesn't look uh, completely horrific. So good work on the deck plate here. A lot of these Euro trucks, especially these uh, like the Scanians and stuff, will have really like they're very com they're very tight looking. They don't have a lot of crap hanging, a lot of um, side bumpering. This looks really good detailing on there. Uh, let's go ahead and lower the cab, and we'll uh, latch it up. So we have our uh, light cord right here. We have the ability to put the light cord in and out. So that's cool. Um, that was something stated in the uh, instructions. We'll go ahead and lock this cab up. All right, we'll grab the light cord and we'll plug it. And I'm just going to go out some. So let's go out. All right, we'll give it a little bit of slack. All right, good. So we'll go ahead and we want to go gear up. We'll crank. Nice detailing on that. I like to see that. A little bit of clippage there, but not bad. That's just the, uh, this is sagging, I think. All right, good. So that is, we'll get the gear all the way up. Generally, IRL, I wouldn't want to slam them all the way up. So we'll go ahead and stop them there. All right, uh, good detail in here. Looks like lots of cool lighting there. Uh, some XML on that to stretch those. I like the coloring on this trailer. The green came out nice. Carriage, 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 pickups. Oh, that's all carriage stuff. Have some reflectors there. Nice detailing on the reflectors. Paintable indicators there. I like that. More right there. Really good detailing on this. I like the caution uh, badging on this. Some, uh, a license plate. Nice detailing on the trailer in general. Very cool. Dualies. Love me a dualies. Uh, there we go. We've got uh, directional there. The uh, right looks like there. It's that. Push button. Oh my god, it's a left drive. Look at that. There's a theme in left drive. We got some uh, nice mirrors there. I like the stocks on the mirrors. This one has a shorter stock than the left one. That's neat. I like that. Let's go ahead and jump up on this, John. All right, nice detail in the door there. Even the doors are well detailed there. I like that. I don't know what that is. Uh, is that a lamp? I can't tell what that is. A lot of good stuff in here. We have a fire extinguisher as I needed that today. Welding torch, clock. Heat hair, some flashlight, especially these Euro trucks, they're much tighter than U.S. spec because the U.S. has a little bit more space and they don't have a length restriction. So the, um, you know, uh, they're very compact in here. I've always liked these Euro trucks. Uh, nice work here on all the XML work. A lot of good XML work in here. Have RPM, light selector, screen selector, uh, release park brake, release trailer brake, trailer brake, retarder. We have enable 6x6 bumper spots, LEDs, green. 
uh, bleeds, we have a uh, shifter key button. All right, light selector. So you notice that popped up. So there's some good lure work on this. So there's high beams, really good lure work. I'm, uh, I'm happy with that, that's neat. Screen selector, we can change our different modes on our screen, that's very cool, I like to see that. That's really neat. We have uh, RPM, RPM is should be your big gauge. Uh, kilometers an hour, air pressure, so we have air brakes in here, that's cool. Diesel, engine temp, release park brake on the uh, tractor, on the trailer. Trailer brake, we don't need. Uh, enable six by six, why not? Bumper spots. Uh, bleed air tanks. Okay, I didn't mean to hit that. I should not have pressed that. <laughs> I'm used to IRL, you'd have to get out and you'd have to drain them by hand, which is always fun. Let's turn on some lights here for a second. All right, let's look at the trailer lights. Um, I'm not seeing trailer lights. Let me see, brakes. Oh, whoop, whoop, what's that? What's that? What's going on here? What is going on here? Uh, WS is throttle, up down is gear stick, left directional. Okay, I don't know why it's, I don't know what's going on here. With, am I, oh, I st did I start in reverse? I might have started in reverse. Let's see, do we have a gear selector? I don't think so. Did I start in reverse? Okay, I think I started in reverse. I might have clicked down the down arrow and started us in reverse. So I can't really see the trailer brakes, uh, trailer lights. We'll look at when we get outside. Uh, we'll do three for hazards. So we got some side hazards there. That's nice to see on the trailer, on the tractor as well. Uh, nice. So let's get it, go ahead and get outside. So I think I clicked it in reverse when I was starting. So it feels like a truck. You know, it drives like a truck. I don't feel like I'm driving a car masquerading as a truck. I always like that. Uh, I don't see any trailer lights. Not sure what's up if that's supposed to have uh, rear trailer lights or not. I don't see any... They could be in those paintable indicators. I'm not seeing them. Hazards are on. Okay, let's go ahead. I really like the detailing of the trailer, too. Let's turn it up a little bit. It's, the engine is running so efficient, I can't hear it. There we go. Like a truck that has a little bit of a noise. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and uh, we'll get lined up. So this is a rear loader. Um, let's check my sight lines. I have a good sight line all the way down to the rear of my trailer. This one's a little bit harder. I can't see my trailer. So that's not a huge problem, but without being able to see the trailer on my blind side, um, you know, I'll, I'm going to actually try jackknifing this in. We'll see how that works. Uh, I have, I feel like I have good control over this truck. So we'll see if I can jackknife this in. As a tractor trailer guy, I uh, see. I problem is IRL. I'd be able to look out the window, so I'm going to use my mirror. All right, we have the reverse. We're in reverse. Okay, I'm going to. Oh, it's a, it's a little bit fast, but that's the game. Is the game's a little bit fast. The shorter your trailer, the faster it will jackknife. So I'm going to try to straighten this out here. I'm in neutral. All right, I was in neutral. I'm trying not to drive off the dock too, so I just need to. Up, oh, I put it. In, I put it in reverse two. Let me make sure I'm in reverse one. Yeah, you definitely want to go slow. This is the benefit of having a proper truck transmission. Is you know you can go. Um, it controls your speed. So I know in reverse one I can only go so fast. In reverse two I could go faster. I don't want to go faster. So I'm going to use the mirror, and this is a good testament to if it behaves and handles well. If I can back this up. Uh, as a tractor trailer, um, you know that that lets me, you know, that tells me that I can put it right where I want, and that's a good uh, good indication of handling prowess on this. All right, we're gonna start to jackknife it now. Now I can see it. So this is a trick you'll do in tractor trailer where you you get it lined up a little bit crooked, and then at the last second you jackknife it because you see how my everything went in my mirror, so I was able to see it. Go ahead and I'll put on the uh, trailer brake. And then uh, we're going to go ahead, and I want to put it in neutral. That's cool. We have a gear indicator right there. And I'll set the tractor brake as well. I like these doors. These doors are neat. I like that little pocket door. Okay, so let's go ahead, and I'm probably going to have to go back a little bit. Let's see. Uh, carriage forward. Okay. 
carrier, carrier, let me say carrier, uh, connector release. Let's see. There we go. Okay. Let's head back. Go down. So is this a top loader? Uh, no. Okay. I just was checking those lights. I wasn't sure if it was a top loader. It's a bottom loader. All right. There we go. So you see how even with, you know, it's tractor trailer and I'm using a mirror that has low res and I was still able to back up. I don't think I need that much um, light cord. There we go. A little bit of belly in the light cord is good. All right. Let's go ahead and I'm going to back up again using my mirrors. I do like the mirrors not being on the doors. Max had the had the mirrors and the doors, which I didn't mind, but end up banging your mirrors against everything. I uh, need to release brakes. There we go. I just get it. Let me see. I got it. Okay, I did hit it. Okay, perfect. All right, let's go ahead and set that. Let's go in neutral. I was in reverse four, which was a little bit high for that. All right, nice. Um, did I grab? Let's see. Oh, I have release. Uh, let's see. Carry connector release. Okay, I, I had that off. That's why we didn't connect. Okay. Pick this container up. All right, we'll start dragging forward. Loads nicely. No issues there. Okay, does this lock in place? Uh, let's see. Gripper lock. So I want to make sure... Break is false. Let's see. Carrier connector release we don't want to touch. Let's go there. Yeah, so it would be it would be good, I think, to have these gripper brakes on. I don't see any option for it, but I think that would be a smart thing just to make sure they don't they don't move on you. Alright, let's go ahead and we're gonna jackknife hard out of here and let's get gotten. Alright. Let me check my sight side. I want to watch for my trailer wheels. Can't really see my trailer wheels, but I can look in the mirror. Just, it's a short trailer. You know, if it was a long trailer, I'd probably be able to see them. Let's go ahead and take the hazards off. Don't need to drive with their hazards on all day like a doof. Bumper spots, LED. Ooh, LED, grill LEDs. Oh, very cool. Look at that. That's neat. I like that. That's a cool feature. Lead air tanks, we will not click again. I like the I like the idea of that, but I would not put it there where you can accidentally kill your, your air <laughs> air pressure. There might be a dump on some of these Euro trucks, but I've never seen a dump like that in an American spec truck. We actually had to go out and drain our tanks manually with the valves. All right, climbing up here. Nice uh, handle is fine. It feels like a truck, which I love. You know, I really do not like, I don't like it when a truck feels like a car, you know, and and, it, and it's understandable. Most people have never driven a proper truck before, so, you know, it, um, but you can see, like, uh, it goes right where I want. A little bit of a, so I did that. I lugged it out. I didn't downshift enough for the hill because it's like a truck. I actually have to downshift. Some of them I didn't have to downshift at all. This one I feel like, you know, I have to drive this like a truck. I come to the hill, I need to downshift, you know. I start going down the hill. You know, I need to control my speed. I can upshift now. There we go. So it feels really good. Now, it feels like a truck, which is what I like to see out of a truck, you know. A sports car, if you, if a sports car felt like a truck, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't think it was a good sports car. And as far as I'm concerned, if a truck feels like a sports car, it's not really a truck, you know, and that's... Um, you know, they should kind of feel how, what they are like. And this one definitely feels like a truck to me. All right, so we're downshifting for the hill. We're going to let this, we're going to let the engine control our speed. So my hands are off. It's going nicely down the hill because it has a transmission that will uh, modulate its speed. So I like that. All right, I'm going to get a little bit of speed on the snowy road here and see if we have any issues. Nope, having no issues. It has a 12-speed. Let's see if I can get up to 12. I'm I'm not going to let us roll because I'm driving like a dink, so we'll, uh, I will get to 12th. But there's 12th gear. And I'm going to start downshifting here. So 
downshifts properly. I can control my speed with a downshift. Nice. All right, excellent. So let's go ahead and put the brakes on. And let's unload. So drives it drives really well. This is uh, this, this is overall a really great package. I love the detailing on here. I didn't you know I can't even get to everything. There's so much in there. Um, I really like the trailer. I like the way this drives. It drives really really well. A uh, lot of good detailing in here. I really like all of that. Uh, the only thing I would add personally, and this is a nitpick. Um, okay, never mind. It's doing release connector. I would have it break. I would have it do an auto break there, so it breaks to here. Just to keep it stable, but you didn't need it. It didn't slide anywhere. But that would be the only thing I'd add. And again, like I said, that's a nitpick. I like the rim color as well in this. That's kind of a cool color. I'm always looking for better rim colors. I always kind of hate the ones I have. But uh, really cool build. I liked it a lot. This was uh, kind of the whole package. Thanks for submitting. And the next build here is the Avico Eurostar. So... A little bit of a basic thumbnail there, still with a frame on it. Here we have some good pictures, though, here. We have uh, some snowies. Nice design here on the cab and the fenders. I have a gato in there. A gato pequeño. All right. Uh, please like the creation if you had fun using it. The Avico Eurostar is a heavy-duty truck model that was produced by Avico from 93 to 2003, which got replaced by the Stralis, it replaced the 80s design Turbo Star. Uh, this vehicle is made for my challenge. Le Vico Estra y un modelo de autocario pensa pro del Vico del 1993 al 2003. Sosticios del Stralis. Ha sosticio el Turbo Star proyectado en el año 9880. Case of Hero is that uh, per Captain Cocker's Hotel Truck Challenge uh, Italiano. My Italian is not good at all, so that's uh, <laughs> spec. Uh, okay, uh, just a spec. Uh, engine cylinder count 40, 8 speed auto. It has a car's acceleration. Uh, that is about uh, almost as fast as my motorcycle. So, uh, length, uh, width, height, ground clearance, max cargo, one container. This truck is known to struggle with an even train. Please watch going over rough terrain. So a little bit basic on the instructions there, but uh, we'll see if we can manage. All right, here we are with the Avico. So nice design work on here. I really like these lenses. That's good work on the lenses there. Really look like realistic lighting there. This is neat down here. I really like this. So some fins. We have a heat sink. Looks like some stair pieces maybe. I can't tell what this piece is. Oh, HUDs. Looks like HUDs, I think. Uh, nice work on the step here. Uh, 45 light on there. That's kind of cool for the sleeper. Storage hatch there. Uh, that's neat. That pops out. All right, let's see. We have a... Uh, it looks like a def tank. That looks pretty uh, good for a def tank there. Some, uh, some air. We have some fuel. Container lifting array, disconnect, and uh, refueling, it appears. Good detail in here on the... Uh, on the mud flaps and uh, fenders, we have a spare. Nice light in there. I like those lights. Nice detailing work on this. Let's see. We are right-hand drive. Our first right-hand drive. I knew we'd get one eventually. All right, here's a right-hand drive. We have a sleeper with a gato in the back. All right, we have cup holders there. We have a uh, passenger seat, proper cab over with the engine underneath it. Fuel, bat, gear. Uh, a little bit flicky flacky here. A little bit flicky flacky there. AD, gas throttle. Uh, left, right is indicators. So there's indicator left, indicator right. Okay, let's see. What else we have? Horn. Don't hear the horn. I am not hearing the horn. Okay. Uh, reverse is two. Brakes, 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 brakes. Okay, are brakes on forward? Yeah, brakes are on forward. I'm not a huge fan of that. Okay, let's see. Two. Yeah, the, it's backwards on reverse. All right, I got stuck here, so. Now I'm going to re-pull it. I got it stuck on that. Yeah, brakes are, it's a little bit weird. It has it where um, 
When you're going backwards, you want to press forwards to stop. Not a huge fan of that. It's not bad, but I'm just not a huge fan of it. Cycle lights, so there's uh, regs, high beams, and off. Okay, nice to see. All right, let's go ahead and start her up. Its base is handbrake. I don't know if it starts on or off. I don't have any indication, I don't think. Hard to tell if it's on or off, so. Let's get out and check, because I don't want to drive around with the brake on. Look like a jackass if you drive around with the brake on. All right, let's go. Brake is true, okay. So, no real indicator on there, I don't see. Maybe there is, I don't see it. So let's go ahead and shut that brake off. So it's automatic. The gear, this is awfully fluttery. What is that? It just says dial. So I don't know what that is. RPM and this is dial, so I'm not sure what that is. Yeah, it drives like a truck. It drives like a car. And smash. That is revving up like crazy. It definitely drives like a car. I'm going to take it a little bit easier on this here, but it accelerates like crazy, like it's a, car, a sports car. So I'm going to take it real uh, slow here. That's the... Uh, Original victim there. Let's take it real slow here. Oh, oh, this is definitely a parking lot princess truck. Very low bumper on that. Uh, no, any sort of mirror. So brakes, 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 brakes. Uh, no, any sort of mirror at all. So I don't know how I'm intended to get hooked to this container. What is up with this engine? Revin, revin, revin. Lots of revin. Okay. I'm trying not to light this container on fire. Shit. Yeah, this is a little bit interesting to control. Okay, let's go right there. Hopefully I can do this without lighting this on fire. I got to go forward a little bit. I think it's a rear loader again. Right, stop, 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 stop. Brakes, brakes, brakes. Come on. All right, let's go ahead and um, put the parking brake on. All right, try to get this loaded up. Oh, that's fast. Okay. Let's go ahead and back up here. All right, let's go ahead and set the brake, and I'll load this up. Oh, that's interesting. What's it doing here? What is it doing? I will double check the workshop page. There was not much on the workshop page, so we will have to see what this is, looks like on the workshop page. Don't there are no instructions on this, so I will do what I can do. Do I Okay, there we go. All right. So I just need a cycle. It work it's working now. All right. There we go. We're all connected. All right, let's get out of here. I'm very concerned about that front bumper, though. Said first gear. This Is this a Chevy Corvette, or is this a truck? What is what unit is that? Why is it spinning? Turning radius is pretty good. It is it is like a sports car though. Trade it in for a manual transmission. 
I'd ask the factory for a manual. Index that gauge, maybe uh, label it. Trying not to overspeed us here. Got to be uh, kilometers an hour, I'm thinking. No way that's miles an hour. I don't know. Could be. I don't know what I don't know what the gearbox does. It, like gives me a big toot of power. I'm having to like just tap the power off. I can't just control it. Can't control my speed with the gearbox. All right, let's go ahead and we will stop. Park brake. Go ahead and kill the engine. Uh, let's get back in the seat. Let that door open. Okay, good. I would. I would like some mirrors too. Without mirrors, that's not my favorite. You know, I have to do third person to operate it. I can't operate in first person. All right. Is it gonna drop or what's it doing? Are you going to drop, sir? Okay. Are you possessed by an evil spirit? There we go. Okay. Okay. I, I had disconnect. What's going on here? Why won't you disconnect there, guy? All righty. So apparently it, it uh, misses us and does not want to leave. So cool truck. Really cool detailing on there. I'm not a fan really of the, um, of the fact that it's a sports car in truck's clothing. Um, it's not a it's not a big problem. It's a parking lot princess that it it uh, hits. It doesn't have much ground clearance. Uh, it, it's designed to be a highway truck, you know. But uh, you know this was an off road course. So um, cool truck. I really like the detailing a lot. The exterior detailing. Like I'd like to see some mirrors on there. Not a fan of that gearbox, but uh, really very uh, cool looking truck. I really like the uh, exterior design elements of it. So thanks for a minute. And I'll move on to the next one. And moving on to the next build, we have the NL-105 Box Hopper by Neat Yards Land Collection. So I really like this. this is a cool thumbnail there. Nicely branded. Look, some good effort there. Some nice pics showing off of the vehicle. Very cool build here. Nice pics there. I like the pics. All right, this is by Neat Knot. The uh, NL-105 Box Hopper and Neat Yards Land Production use high physics. I always do. Information specs. Uh, history, fictional, plans in early years. As uh, Nitika was getting into the container business in the late 90s, it stated to be apparent that they need something to move the containers delivered by the ship around ports. They already had trains for larger loads, but those are too inefficient for smaller loads. Eventually, they decided they'd try something new and build a truck to move their containers. So in the early 2000s, the first NL-105 was produced. In some ways, especially comfort and safety, the truck was very much ahead of other trucks in the market uh, at that time. But one trade-off was that the box hopper was a pretty expensive machine. This made it take fairly long for it to catch on moving containers in almost every port. Although the start was quite rocky for the truck, in a decade it would spread into most of the Stormworks ports. In its early years, Nitika would start to notice that the vehicle's expensive loading design was starting to pay off. Unlike other trucks that used cranes to load containers, the NL-105 had a flatbed that would make it easier and quicker to load cargo at the time. Nitika also started using it to move cargo over short distances between ports. Thanks to its quick turnaround rate, the truck would earn itself the box hopper nickname. Still around today, the NL-105 can still be seen today, although it has mostly been replaced by newer trucks. Although it may not be as memorable as other neat yard builds, it still proved to be a safe and reliable workhorse for Nitika. Length, width, height, fuel, range, top speed, uh, features Lua dashboard, comfy bed, high range, pretty easy to use if you've read the description. Uh, equipment, much more. Known issues. Uh, limited steering speed is over 80 kilometers an hour. Intentional... Uh, needs to be there for the truck not to spin out. Loading can be problematic or impossible if high physics detail isn't on. I always have it on. Uh, loading can sometimes not go well due to Stormworks physics. Procedure, start up, go to cab, key, turn on the key, uh, turning the key on. This also turns on electric, driving and shifting. WS throttle up down is for shifting gears. Shift only when RPS is stable at 15 or 16 or 19 or 20 if high power setting is on. Uh, when going uphill, if RPS starts failing, shift down. Okay. I think I know how to shift a uh, transmission at higher speeds, uh, therefore is lower steering. 
Uh, loading, high physics detail on, uh, park brake, back up 15 meters from the container, unlock flatbed, move flatbed all the way back, move the winches down, reverse the container and let the container attach, uh, park brake on again, bring winches all the way up, they might get stuck, bring flatbed forwards, lock flatbed. Credits, all systems made by me, credit uh, to SWF for help. Legal, if you're making a video about this, please give a link, do not re-upload. All right, sounds good, let's go ahead and we'll take a look. All right, I really like the exterior detail in here. Kind of reminds me of like maybe an old international. Good grill detail in here. Good lighting detail in there. I really like the bumper. Yeah, really good detail in the bumper here. You can see some paint, some shadowing, and the coloring there. That's nice to see. A little bit of a higher bumper, which is nice. We have some mirrors on there. I like to see mirrors. Sleeper cab. We have a pump fuel in right there. Electric cable hose and fuel and litrus. Unlock, flatbeds, okay, batteries. We have some hatches here. Nice work there, let's see. We have a bumper with some uh, paintable indicators on there for lights, more in here. A little bit overscaled, maybe. Yeah, it's a little bit tall, but uh, it's nice. I like the detailing, really good detailing on that. Let's see, are we on the left side again? We are. All right, let's go ahead and close this. A lot of XML in here. Turn the engine on. Nice Lua screen in there. Have uh, speed and kilometers an hour, gear, RPS, fuel, temp engine, clock. I like the angling of the dash. That's cool. Have an emergency hatch there. Uh, nice painting in the back. Nice sleeper cab back here. There's a nice feeling sleeper cab. Let's see what's in the middle here. Low beams. Let's see. Low beams, nice. I like to see the paintable indicators like that. High beams. Uh, I gotta probably have the lows on for that. Yep. High beams come on when the uh, lows are also on. Hazards. Have hazards on the rear, the sides, and the front. Very nice to see. That's cool. I like that. Good work on those uh, paintable indicators. Let's get rid of my friggin' binoculars. Heater. Uh, high power setting. We'll leave that off. Interior light. There we goes. I like the slow turn on. That's cool. Uh, hood. All right, there we go. It's got our engine sitting in the middle there. That's neat. Kind of as a, you know what this looks like? A Volvo. That's what it looks like. Wouldn't surprise me if this was uh, based off of Volvo. Kind of got the Volvo hood and the Volvo engine color. The engine color gave it away for me. Looks like Volvo engine color. Uh, lock doors. Okay. That's very cool. All right, so it is uh, 80 steering WS throttle. Up, down, or gears manual, of course. That's how we like it. Honk. I like the honker. Blinker left. Blinker right. Nice. All right, let's get getting. A manual transmission. Feels like a truck. I'm revved out, and we're going a nice slow speed in first, which is what we should be doing in a truck. Give it a nice uh, wide berth here. We'll give it a, give it a little bit of a swing turn. Mirrors aren't great for visibility. Like this one, I can't really see out of that one at all. This one, I can just barely see. So a little bit more for show, I think. All right, so we're going to go for that white container again. We're going to cut in here. This one handles nicely. I can control my speed. The ones that I've been able to control my speed, I'm willing to get close to the, the containers. Uh, the ones that I can't control my speed, I'm kind of a little bit, um, try not to. All right, there's reverse. Let's see. All right, I can see the container just barely with my uh, mirror. There we go. I'm going to give it a bump. Actually, I'm not going to give it a bump. It says 15. Let's, let's figure there. I think we're good. I don't know why it's revving the engine when I put my brake down. If I press the S key, it's revving the engine. I don't know why. But let's go up and let's set the brake. Parking brake is automatic. Okay. Parking brake's automatic. I see it now. All right. So let's go ahead, unlock this. Flatbed backwards. Okay. Okay, that's flatbed. Then we have uh, spotlights, release container. Flap it up. Okay. Uh, let's see what's up with this. Probably this. 
Release, uh, no, it's not release container. Let's see. Flatbed up. Uh, let me read the instructions, make sure I'm not... All right, let me read the instructions, make sure I'm not making an error. All right, let's make sure we have it all the way back. I might not have put it all the way back. Okay, it needs to go all the way back. That's my fault. I read the instructions again. A little bit weird that it hangs off the back like that. You know, not really realistic, but it's not a big deal. It's kind of a nitpick. Uh, flatbed down. Okay. Okay, there we go. Flatbed down, all right. And then we want to move. Uh, this is winches down. Holy mother. A little bit uh, springy. All right, there we go. Let's go ahead and we'll hook this bad John. All right, let's go ahead and we'll bring it up. So, it's, holy jeez. A little bit wonky on the mechanism here. I like the idea of the winches, but um, I don't know if it's aiding it or not. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think what I would do in real life. In real life, I would want to slide the bed forward. Like, that's what I would want to do in real life. But I don't know if it's going to screw this up. So let's go up to make sure it's not giving it any sort of uh, nuisance. Uh, that we're having any sort of storm marks problems. I just want to make sure it will slide. It's still coming. It's a little bit funky. Yeah, a little bit funky here. Let's see if we can get it. All right, I'm going to go all the way backwards. And I want to tip it all the way up. It's just, it's a little weird to me that it, it kind of sits in the sky. Let me see. Let's check the loading. So it says, um, all right, let's see. Bring winches all the way up. They might get stuck. Bring flatbed forwards, lock flatbed. Okay. So winches are all the way up. Bring flatbed forwards. Might get stuck. All right, so... Recycling it, fixed it. That's usually just a storm marks thing. All right, let's see if it clicks. Nice. So it's clicked up. Let's jump in. All right, and we'll shift up, and we'll go. So not too bad. It's a little bit wonky, the uh, system there, but it's not, not bad. You know, it worked. A little bit sticky. You know... Definitely, you know, you get some Stormworks physics th stuff where it doesn't like to have multi-bodies and stuff like that, but uh, it worked overall. So one thing I note about this, it has a long wheelbase. So with a long wheelbase, I want to make my turns a little bit wider, so I'm keeping that in mind. I don't know why it, it throttles up so much when I get up in the ranges here. Not a big deal, just, you know, throttling up quite a bit there but it's not like we're not taking off like we're a sports car and I like that that's good you know even though I'm in you know it's revving up I'm not um, I'm not taking off like a sports car I'm not afraid of this thing you know like it's revving up I think to give me extra power but the gearing is correct it's not having issues with the gearing so I like this uh, I like this uh, Lua dash here clock in there. We have temperature. That's got to be uh, speed. There's another speed gauge. Was it? Yep. Kilometers an hour. That's kilometers an hour there. I can't see beyond the steering wheel there, but there's the clock. So nice nice work on the Lua dash there. I like the analog clock. It's kind of cool. Alright, let's downshift for the hill. Let's let an engine brake down the hill. You know, the ones that feel like a truck, I can kind of engine brake down the hill. Handles very nicely. You know, I have no problems with it. You know, engine's nice and quiet and high gear. I'm a little bit of tippy there, but not bad. I didn't really worry about it. But drives well, nice gearbox. Oh, I don't know what that's all about. I let off the, the gas, the accelerator a little, and it gives me a little bit of the old, uh, the old yelling at me. 
All right, there we go. Okay, it automatically puts the parking brake on in neutral. Um, you know, not a big deal. I just sometimes I'll kick it in neutral as I'm coming to stop, but uh, not a big deal. So let's go ahead and unload this. So it's a little bit weird to me that this just like hovers. You know, um, a 53 foot container can weigh you know easily. 70, 80,000 pounds, and then so you figure this is half of that. This could be up to like probably 20 to 30,000 pounds. Have one of these and have it hanging in space is just a little bit strange to me. Uh, let's go ahead and we want to do winches down. There we go. All right, let's uh, release this. Winches up. Holy mother. Yeah, it's a little bit weird to me, this loading system. It's not bad, but it's just a little bit strange. I didn't get a chance to go flatbed down. The weight of that pushed it down, so I didn't get a chance to really push the flatbed down. But, uh, you know, loading mechanism, it works. It, it's a little bit kinky here and there where it gets stuck, but a lot of that is just Stormworks physics. So, you know, I'm certainly not holding Stormworks physics against anybody. But um, very cool build. I like the detailing a lot. I like the drive system. Those are important things to me in a truck is that it drives well. You know, it, it's um, this felt like a truck. It didn't feel like a sports car. So really cool build. Thanks, Sharon. And the next build is the F3 SLT. So again, like to see a little bit of detailing on that thumbnail. You had some of the other competitors had some really nice detailing in there. Some nice pictures here. Nice to see. Is by TIJS VSN. So the F3 self-loading truck, F3 self-loading truck is a versatile European style truck designed for easy and comfortable transportation of ISO containers. With its powerful engine and impressive speed, it ensures efficient and reliable performance. The SLT is simple to use. Most systems are automatic. Start up, enter the truck, switch the engine on and release the parking brake. Wait for engine to turn. Secure the crane. This is important. If the crane is stored in neutral position, always turn this on. Driving. Uh, use WSD reverser on dashboard. Be gentle with the slopes. Uh, loading container. Get out of the truck. Uh, to turn on the lower connection of the containers, turn on secure crane and switch the load unload switch. Wait for the crane to get in the loading position. Maneuver the truck in front of the trailer and connect uh, trailer uh, container. Switch on parking brake, switch off load, unload, and wait for load to be in storing position. Then turn on secure crane button, turn off parking brake, and start driving. Unloading containers, uh, turn off secure crane and switch on the load, unload switch. Switch off load slash unload switch. Wait for it to move to storing position and press secure crane drive. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at it. I really like the design of this. I like the uh, paint is really well done in the front. I like the shaping. The general shaping is really nice on that. Cool work on that. Some uh, protective side skirts on there. A little bit weird here in the wheel wells here. A little bit strange there. Like maybe cut that across the top a little bit. There's a lot of gap in there in the wheel wells. A little bit barren under here. You can kind of see it's just like a pipe holding everything together here. Like a little bit of detail in there would be kind of cool to see. A little bit more detail in the rear here. Again, this is like your weakest spot, I'd say, here is where it's like really under detailed under there. So maybe a little bit more detailing in there. Nice fuel tanks in there. We uh, right or left-hand drive? Where is the right there? Okay, left-hand drive. All right, let's go ahead and start the engine. Have headlights. We have reverse. We have a reverse camera that goes from map to reverse. That's neat. Uh, we have RPS, fuel, engine temp, and kilometers an hour. We have park brake, which is currently on. Load, unload, disconnect cargo, secure crane. Okay. Take the parking brake off. Says it's automatic. All right, it drives like a truck. Uh, there we go. It's now it's acting like a car a little bit. Yeah, it's starting to drive way too fast. Holy, yeah, it's driving way too fast there for me. Driving very much like a car when I get going here. You know, that's the one thing that's that, you know, an automatic is not bad with a car. They start to get annoying with a truck because you really can't control your speed. All right, let's go in reverse. Let's see, uh, reverse, let's check our H menu. Our H menu is not filled out. Um, I always like to see it filled out H menu. It just makes it much more uh, user friendly. It says reversers on the dashboard, but um, let's see, reverse right there. You know, just put in AD steer and WS. Even though I know it, it's uh, nice to see the H menu filled out. 
that little bit of extra effort. All right, let's go out and go set the park brake. We'll jump out and take a look. All right, I'm going to set the lock, or the uh, container connector on this. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll click the load unload. So I'm going to put it in reverse just so I have the camera. And I want to do uh, secure crane is off. Do what it's doing. There we go. Okay. All right, that's interesting. Let's go ahead and watch how the mechanism works. That's an interesting mechanism. That's different than what we've seen. That's kind of cool. I like that. A little bit funky there, but it works. You know, that's the important part. Secure. All right, let's go ahead and well, let's get out of here. So that is loaded and secure is on. All right, park brake comes off. I like the mirror. I can actually use this mirror. That's nice to see. I always like a mirror. I can use that one. It's a little bit less usable. I would recommend just angling out a little bit. Um, IRL, I do not care. Oh, shit. Okay. So this is the third time I've been caught on fire here. So, uh, you know, you know the path here. Uh, I hit it a little bit hard, but um, doesn't have much clearance. This is this path was picked uh, purposefully to make sure that, uh, you know, we're going to be able to clear obstacles. So. Kind of have to keep that in mind that, you know, you're going to have to clear obstacles here. So we'll go ahead and I will get a fire extinguisher. We'll put this out really quick. But, um, you know, the the path is published so you guys know what you're going to hit and what you're not going to hit. Um, I wasn't going that fast. I was trying to go slow and still stop burning me there, game. Still have some damage. We're going to run with the damage here. All right. So as you can see, with that suspension in the front, you know, personally, I, I usually do hard axles, especially my trucks. Like, this is this is a big off-road course, you know. Uh, this course was picked because it was a challenging off-road course. And you kind of have to think of that. You know, it's kind of accelerating like a car again here. You know, you have to be careful of this. Anytime I come up here, you know, you have to worry about this bumper hitting. So, just notice it has rear steering on there. It, it accelerates very fast, too, so if it's accelerating fast and it has a low bumper, there's a good chance that it's going to hit something. You know, I can't really control my speed well in an automatic, and um, it accelerates pretty fast, and we have a really low front bumper, so it's kind of tough to drive in this mountain pass that this was uh, designed to be on. So luckily we're still, uh, I don't see where my damage is, but we still have some damage somewhere. I, I went all underneath and checked it. But, yeah, like, see, we're really accelerating fast here. We're not accelerating like a truck. I would like to see, a, like, a more proper truck gearbox in this. You know, like a 12-speed transmission is what a lot of the automatics are running or more. Oof. Just, I'm, a, I'm terrified of hitting the bottom. On some of these, on some of these uh, leveling out sections, you know the problem with the game uh, is the suspension. You cannot make the suspension as stiff as it would be in a truck, really. So that tends to be why I run hard axles on my trucks. Is you can't make the suspension as stiff as they'd be on a truck. Trucks have incredibly stiff suspension because the suspension is there for the load. It's not there for you. The cab suspension. And the seat suspension is there for the driver, uh, unlike in a car. So it has really stiff suspension to carry the load. All right, let's go ahead and put the parking brake on. Let's go ahead and uh, we will secure and we will unload. There we go. All right, so a little bit funky here. Let's see if it uh, unloads itself properly. Yeah, a little bit of a funky unload mechanic there. Looks like it's going to do it. Well, I'll go ahead and I'll take the brake off and I'll help it a little bit. There we go. 
Uh, yeah, a little bit of a funky unload mechanic. It is neat. It is different. I like that. But it is a little bit funky. It, does, it wants to hang up a little bit. So we're disconnected there. Let's jump on out. So I really like the design of this. The cab is really cool. I like the paint job and the work. Um, you know, a little bit. These are very high fender wells. Personally, I would cut it across the top there. I, I, I know why you did it now because of the suspension. But frankly, I would go hard axles on this. On this, I think it would perform better. Um, the automatic transmission, it's it's going a little bit fast. It is a truck. It's supposed to be slow. It's not supposed to be super fast. Uh, we have some equipment in there I didn't notice. But uh, cool build, and thank you for submitting it. And the next build is the red side loader. So a little bit of a work on there. We have another side loader here. We have uh, three pictorials. The nice this is by Phil. Uh, side loader, side loader, or a side loader. Uh, anyway, pretty cool technology uh, this tries to come close to. Extra laser for position help, distance to the closest container connector the crane can reach is being marked. Uh, you don't need to use boom adjustments when on flat terrain. Open the panel on driver's side cab exterior to control the crane. No fancy automatic systems yet. Nice. I like a manual one. Truck it has decent ground clearance and breakover angles. Manual transmission, seven speed, three reverses. Uh, 170 kilometers an hour. Mass is uh, 2616, 375 liters, cost about 23, made for the challenge. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so here we are with the red side loader. So uh, a little bit basic on design compared to some of the other ones. We have a winch there in the front, some big globes there. Uh, crane control panel. Oh, that's neat. I like that feature. That is pretty cool. All right, a little bit monochromatic. You know, a little bit of detail would be nice there. A little bit basic under here, but uh, not too bad. I like the uh, like the detailing in there. That's pretty good. Side loader is cool. Interesting on the rear here. What do we have here? I uh, don't know what that's about. Decoration probably could be decoration. Let's see. Are we a uh, left or right? Left hand drive. All right. Let's go ahead and jump on in. Have some mirrors. Like to see mirrors. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll check. Toggle mirrors, okay. All right, let's see. Um, Info electricity is off. I have no work for key mirrors there. Okie dokie. Toggle position lasers. Okay, I probably need to do the key first. Let's do the ignition key. Yep, okay. That's fine. Toggle mirrors, there we go. All right, target lasers. Very futuristic. Uh, let's see, wheel brake is on. Park zero. Okay, we have RPS, fluid, temp, and kilometers per hour. We have a screen there. We have mirror angle. Okay, that's nice. We can change the mirror. Uh, that's cool. We'll change the mirrors there. Very neat. I like that. Uh, some microcontrollers, invisible visibility here is kind of. Uh, we do have fire extinguisher. Unfortunately, we've been needing that. Uh, steering's AD, WS throttle, left, right is turn indicator. Let's check that out. So we have. Uh, left, right, turn indicator. Uh, theoretically, theoretically, okay, it's on the cat, it's on the front, it's not on the rear. Okay, uh, let's see, up, down, shift, space, horn. One's the brake, that comes off, and we go into drive. Light cycle three, three, and three. Oh, we have uh, spots too, luscious. All right, let's go ahead and shift up into first, and let's get going. Nice, like I can floor this, and the whole point of a manual transmission is, you know, it's math. You have a gear ratio, you have a max RPS, and even though I'm floored, I have complete control of this vehicle. That's why I keep drumming on about uh, transmissions and how important they are, is like the point of a truck's transmission is to help, make, uh, you know, control the load and control the speed, and this is doing that for me. And so I purposely went past it. I'm going to go brake. Brakes nicely. So no backup alarm, which is fine, but it just makes it a little harder to know I'm there. See, see, because of the, the proper gearbox, I can actually control myself and get myself where I need to be. And that's why, like, a lot of these automatics I've been kind of picking on because, you know, um, even in real life, we hate the automatics because they, um, you know, the automatics in a truck IRL like, you cannot back up nicely. You know, these are professional drivers with a million miles plus, and we all struggle to get um, get things to back up properly. 
it's kind of frustrating. And so uh, that's real life. You can imagine how in-game it's not going to be much different. It's challenging to get an automatic to work well with a truck. Uh, you can't get that finesse you need with a truck. And, you know, so that's why I like having a nice manual here. Uh, boom adjustment to play staves. I like that. That's neat. Those are cool. All right, let's see. Uh, stave up, down. So we're pretty good there. We don't really need to adjust it. I'm just playing with it. Boom adjustment. Okay. Uh, piston adjustment. Okay, that's out. Uh, deploy arms. I don't want to click this one on till the tops get clear. Okay, there we go. Arm adjustment. That's down. Okay, good. I like this manual system. You know, I liked uh, some of the other ones where they were automated, but the issue is, like, this one, I can, like, if I don't park perfectly, I can ass I can get this set up. And that's what I like about this, is I can put this where it needs to go. Uh, it disables bed connectors. Okay. There we go. So because I can manually adjust this, it if I park incorrectly, I don't have to get back in and try to fix it. And that w that's nice. I like that. So let's go up, and let's, uh, I'll extend the pistons just a little bit as I go up. Just to try not to smash here. There we go. All right, and we're right over it, so I should be able to do this, and that should grab, I think. Let's see, are they on? Okay, so I don't know why those aren't. Are they grabbed? They're grabbed. Okay, they're grabbed. I just couldn't see them at first. I, I was moving as it was happening. All right, let's go ahead, and I want to put up these stabs. So nice. So this, this loads really well. I like the way this loads. It's intuitive. It's manual. The benefit of this being manual, I know a lot of people just love automation for no particular reason, but um, the nice thing with the being manual is if I don't put it in the exact right position, I can easily uh, move. I can easily adjust it to be where I am. And that's what you're going to find in real life a lot of times is, you know, the ability to adjust it is better than having some automated system because half the time you have to shut the automated system off. Again, I love a manual tr transmission for this reason. Um, we are having some steering problems here, some serious steering problems. But, um, okay, I'm doing all right now. Um, I am floored, and I'm going to safe speed, so I know that I'm not going to hit this bump too hard. Even though uh, Phil has opted for uh, suspension on the front, I'm not afraid I'm going to hit the bumper like I did the last one because I can control the speed. So right now we're in nice flat terrain. I'm going to start shifting up, get ahead of speed here. All right, now I'm going to slow down. I'm going to downshift, 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 take this bump. Nice. We're going to have a nice low gear to go up the hill. This is why I like a manual transmission. This is why professional drivers will often like a manual transmission, is it, it allows you to control the speed. Like, I'm not afraid of hitting that wall like I have with some of the other builds because I can control my speed. Third gear at that RPS is gonna give me that speed every time because it's math, unless we're going down a hill. Because it's math. All right, fourth gear, fifth gear. I, you know, the last one, it was like taking off. I was uncomfortably fast. I had to slow down. Like I'm going too fast now. I'm gonna take off. I'm gonna drop a gear. And now my speed is controlled. You know, I'm afraid of falling off this cliff, but my speed is controlled now. I'm not afraid anymore, you know. So now we're coming up to a hill. I'm going to downshift again. We'll drop to three. And we'll drive. We'll drop to two. And we'll let two carry us down. My hands are off. I don't need to brake. I'm not touching the brakes. You notice my speed's under control because we have a nice manual transmission. Again, I am a huge advocate for the manual transmission. It's why, it's why I don't even do, like, I've done a couple tutorials on automatics, but I'd prefer to have a manual most of the time. It just, it works. A little bit of handling problem, a little bit squirrely. Um, it seems like it has a little bit of a weight and balance problem, but it's not bad. I'm still able to drive. It's not uh, inhibiting me from getting anywhere. So that is good. I like to see that. But uh, I really like the loading system on this. Design-wise, it's basic. I know that this got started a little late, but, um, you know, design-wise, as far as aesthetics, is probably on the lower end. But I really like, I dig the manual transmission. I dig the autom the uh, manual loading. You know, it gives me something to do, too. Uh, you know, a lot of people talk about getting bored in the game or whatever. And a lot of it is, um, you know, if you, if you give up all the work you're supposed to be doing to the game, 
uh, kind of, of course, you're bored, you know? Because uh, this is my work. Uh, oops, stabilizers, rather. There we go. Put those down. You know, this is my work to be done here is uh, is what, you know, you want to give you give away. And so this allows me to manually control this. I like the dual pistons. That's neat. I like that system there. You know, it's very intuitive. I'm able to control it. I'm able to fix where it needs to go. I can detach it. I can bring my piston arms. Uh, I can bring this back and stow it. Bring the supports up. You know, this gives me something to do. It's interactive. I don't feel like I'm a passenger. I don't feel like I'm a secondary character in the game. I feel like I'm actually doing it. So, uh, really cool mechanics on this. I love the transmission. The transmission allowed me to keep control of your vehicle. I like the loading mechanic. Um, you know, could use a little bit of work on looks. You know, I know it was a little bit late on that. So, uh, thanks for minute, and we'll move on to the next one. And the next build is the Halo Tech Ascender. So... Halo Tech Ascender there. Still have that frame on. I'd like to see that gone, potentially. Interesting design on here. Looks like a kind of hook lift design. That's uh, different. I have yet to see a hook lift. I'm kind of glad people chose some different loading methods. It would kind of be boring with all the same, so that's nice. This is by Guarded Halo Background. Uh, this was created for my challenge, developed by a fictional company, Halo Tech, with the Halo Ascender's rugged and well-tested machine. Made to move ISO containers quickly and efficiently, it was designed with the intent that it would be extremely easy for anyone to operate, and it does just that. Specifications and features, 10-cylinder uh, diesel engine, 6-speed AMT transmission with re one reverse gear, uh, 150 kilometers an hour, 680 Steering stability, staves, uh, dim interior and mood, cab heating, various lighting modes, automatic turn signals, push to talk, one passenger seat, cost 30 grand. Uh, once in the driver's seat, turn the ignition key to the bottom right, shift using the up-down arrows, truck will roll forward slowly when in gear, that's neat. Uh, activate the parking brake with space. All the buttons and switches for operating the loader are inside the cab to the right. right so here we are with the Halo Ascender. So I really like the design of this. I like the... I like kind of a little bit of slope on the hood. It's not perfectly... Flat in the front. I like that. Really good detailing in here. I like the frames on these paintable indicators. That's good. Really good work on the bumper here. I like this little bit of bumper details. Nice. Uh, mirrors are cool. I like those mirrors sticking out like that. That's neat. What is this one doing? Okay, this is a front mirror. That's neat, too. That shows the front of the vehicle. Uh, nice paint work on this. I really like the paint work on, on the back here. That looks really neat and industrial and rugged. That's pretty cool. I really like this DOT tape. That's better than mine. I gotta, I gotta improve my DOT tape. I haven't done that in a while. Nice work there on the lights. Really good work on these paintable indicators. Really good there. Nice hotel badge on that. Really cool. Nice. Very cool detailing work on this. Let's go ahead and jump in. Let's see if it's left or right drive. It is left hand drive. What is this? Uh, let's see. Hood pin. Okay. Probably have duels here. Tilt cab. Always nice to see. Nice cab over with a tilt cab. Very cool. Nice feature there. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll close it up. All right, AD steering, WS throttle, up, down gear. Space is parking brake. One is headlights, two is headlight bright, three is flasher, arm spot, hazards, and push to talk. So we'll go ahead and one for headlights. We get our, um, let's see, I might need the key on. Let's turn the key on. Okay, so I'm not getting any sort of running lights in the back. Not a big deal, but uh, it's always good to see. Three flashers. Uh, no flashers in the rear. Interesting. Might just be those cherries on top. Uh, hazards, that's what... Okay, good, it's, it's hazards. So four is the spots in the rear. Uh, five is the hazards. Okay, there are my hazards. Let's see, brakes. Okay, there are my brakes. So we have a third brake light up top as well. All right, that's cool. Let's go ahead and... Um, see what else is in the cab here. So kilometers, fuel, engine temp, bat, gear, RPM, disconnect arm, horn, uh, toggle arm, okay, stave mags, cab heater, mood. There's, oh, I like the mood lighting. That's cool. Good detailing on that. That's pretty cool. Uh, there's the radio dome light. We have the brighten and, uh, let's see, brighten and dim the dome light. All right, nice. Some, uh, I'm not a huge fan of seeing the stuff up on the roof like this, but, you know, where else are you going to put it? There's not much space, so uh, that's kind of cool. Uh, it's not a big deal in that either. Uh, let's see, park brake is off. Let's see, uh, space is park brake, so the park brake starts off. Shift into gear. I'll shut the uh, headlights off here. 
Let's see. Headlights bright. There's brights. Okay, good. All right, I am floored in first gear, and as you can see, I'm easily controlling my speed. Because it's math, I'm I have a uh, you know floored at eight fifteen, and we're going thirteen kilometers an hour, and that allows me to control my speed. I can upshift, and I know I'm going to go a little bit faster. We're going twenty five. So now I'm afraid I'm going to hit my bumper in the front. What do I do? Downshift. And now I can't go any faster than this because it's math. And notice I don't blow my vehicle up. That's, again, reason 9 million why I'm not a huge automatic fan. This gives me really good control. I know my speed here. I want to go a little slower. Just downshift. Upshift again. You know, so this gives me something to do as a driver. It also it helps me control my vehicle. All right, let's go in reverse. All right, let's go ahead. The mirrors are very usable. This one's a front looking, uh, that looks backwards. So it's a little bit weird, but it's kind of what you have to do with the game sometimes. Um, it is innovative to have that sideways like that. All right, so this is a hook lift. So let's go ahead. It's done from the cab, it said. So toggle arm. Okay. So we're going to let the arm go back. All right, and we're going to back straight up. I'm going to look at the container as we go. I should be able to bump it a little bit. All right, we're bumped. Let's go ahead and put it up and set the brake. There we go. Doors open. Let's go ahead and we'll enable this. And we'll probably have to pull up just a hair. So let's go ahead and brake off up. And I'm just going to realign. There we go. We're good. That was all it took. Brake's coming on. We're going to go ahead and toggle the arm, and I want to see it in action. Very cool to see a hook lift. I like the slope on the back of the... Oh, that's interesting, too. Notice the slope angles. That is really cool. I like that a lot. But, yeah, it was, it's cool to see a hook lift. I really like the uh, deflector on there. Really good paint work on this. I like it a lot. All right, let's go ahead and shut this door. All right, let's see. Uh, horn, disconnect, toggle arm, stab mags. We didn't need the stabilizer. I, I probably should have put it on, but I didn't feel like I needed it. All right, again, I have a lot of really good control of this vehicle. This vehicle gives me good control. I don't feel at any point that I am uh, out of control of this vehicle. You know, I took that at speed, was not afraid I was going to hit the bumper because the bumper is a little bit higher than the other one there. So this one is, is fitting for off-road a little bit better. But, like, I know I'm coming up to a hill. In real life, uh, uh, the automatic would shift me up. Uh, you know, in real life, in a manual, I would keep it in a lower gear because I know I'm coming up to a hill. The automatic doesn't know that you're going to be going up a hill. So it, it shifts up, and then you're like, oh, my God, shift down, you know. So I know I'm going to go up a hill. I just shift it down into two, take that hill in two. Plenty of power. I'm just playing with the gears. But I feel very stable. It feels heavy like a truck. I love that. I don't like I don't like the steering of like I'm steering around here. It's slow. It's deliberate. That's what you want in a truck. I like I'm taking this this top probably faster than I've took taken any of the other vehicles because I feel confident in it. You know, and that's important. You know, I want to feel confident in this truck, you know, and that's I do. So I'm back in second gear. We're gonna use the engine braking to go down the hill. That's why I picked this course is, you know, it's it has some nice hills in it. It's challenging. All right, very cool. So this feels really great. This feels like a truck to me, and that's, you know, important in a truck challenge for me. You know, if I was making a sports car challenge, I would want the car to be sporty. I'd want it to accelerate fast. I'd want it to corner well. I'd want it to stay nice and flat and not roll much. Um, and just the same, in a truck challenge, I want it to behave like a truck. I want it to be slow and deliberate. I want it to have good speed control. I want it to feel heavy, and th this really does that. I really uh, like the feeling of this. This drives really well. At no point did I feel uncomfortable. Like I was able to take this one really nice and fast up top and had no concerns. I really like the hook lift design as well. That's really cool. All right, let's un uh, let's see. Let's go stave mags on this time. Very cool. Yeah, so that's a cool design in the stabilizer mags. I really like that. Let's go ahead and we'll toggle the arm. I, I really like how the back folds there. That's really cool. Oh, a little bit funky there. 
Um, let's undo the stabilizer mags. Okay. That's fine. We just didn't need them there. And we'll disconnect the arm. We'll retract the arm. I really like the how this operates. It works really well. It's it's simple. I love the tilt in the back there. That's a nice feature. That's really cool. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump out of this. Uh, really cool, the mood lighting, the paint. This is kind of the complete package. Really good paint job. Drives like a truck. Supposed to be a truck. A little bit wonky there with the stabilizers, but, you know, not a big deal there at all. Um, drives really, really well. So great build, and I really enjoyed testing it out. And here we are with the last build, the CHD. HT container handler. So a uh, nice picture from Chicken Sore here. Uh, I like it. I'll take the uh, badge and make it his own there. It's good pictures here. Nice variety of pictures there by Chicken Sore. Uh, part of Chicken Sore's brand here. Nice to see the brand. Heavy duty truck outfitted to load, transport, and unload containers. Built on Rooster new CHD HT chassis. Built around a relatively narrow. A nine block frame under the cab is a 12 cylinder engine hooked to a basic five speed trans can load containers or any cargo adhering to the operations up to about 300,000 mass. Uh, it's equipped with standard turnkey ignition. Remember to disable the parking brake before shifting into first and taking off. Uh, to use the container handler, unfold using three. Back up to the container you want to load. Make sure the container's connectors are activated. Activate the connectors using hotkey four. There are lights on the connector bracket and one on the dash to let you know they are active. After connecting, push hotkey 3 again. To unload, push hotkey 3, then uh, once container is at end of track, disable connectors. Uh, Rooster Utility Company, built for my challenge. Let's go ahead and take All a right, look. Let's go ahead and take a look at the CHDHT. I like the general look of it. Big globes there, and uh, it does kind of like a little face on it. Kind of reminds me of the Mac trash trucks. Let's see, we have a full cap. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Very cool to see folding cabs. I like that. Nice engine in there. Good work on there. I like the uh, like the air cleaner back here. We have a big def um, exhaust unit in the back. That's nice to see. Very cool detailing on that. I really like to see that. Very industrial looking. Have a spare tire here. Some dualies. Very uh, industrial. Kind of the pipe sides you'll see on some of these um, dumpster. Haulers. It kind of reminds me of a of a trash truck dumpster hauler. Let's see where we're at here. Toggle button there. All right, good. Uh, it is left-hand drive. I think we only have one right-hand drive. All right, uh, 80 steer, WS throttle, up, down, and shift. One is neutral, two park brake, three is container handler, and four is the lock for the key. I like this very Spartan kind of interior. This is cool. I like the little dash here. Uh, it's nice. It's it, This is very much like a, a work truck. So let's go ahead and uh, see what we need to do here. Key button. All right, starts up. We have parking brake, RPS, left indicator. Uh, left indicator on the left here. Let's see. A little bit of, you know, globes in the back. I've been really, uh, some of the people have done really fantastic work with the paintable indicators on the back there. There's some good paintable indicators on the front here. A little bit, I would like to see a little bit of paintable indicator on the back maybe. Some of them are really fantastic with that. Um, let's see, right indicator there. Very nice. Okay, we have RPS, engine temp, speed, kilometers an hour, fuel, bat, gear. We have uh, hazards, uh, container connectors. Let's go ahead and uh, parking brake is on, so we'll press 2 to shut it off, as stated in the rules or the uh, instructions. We'll shift up. We're in first gear. Let's go. Little bit noisy on the revs. Little bit uh, tough to steer a little. Nah, it's not bad. I thought I was gonna have problems in that turn, but we did all right. A little bit revy. Like we're doing 30, well, it's a five speed transmission. That could be why. I'm not afraid really to hit the bumper all that much. Pretty good. I like I like the general look of it. It has that uh, kind of, that Mack trash truck um, chassis kind of look to it. I like that. A little bit revy, a little bit accelerate-y. <laughs> you know, we're in first gear. It's a little bit, it accelerates a little bit fast for me. I like the backup alarm. That sounds nice. I like the mirrors are usable. Good usable mirrors. That's one of the things I really loved about that gimbal update was just the ability to make some proper mirrors. Um, between that and, you know, you're using uh, the invisible pivot, it looks like. 
Using invisible pivots, it looks like? I'm not sure. Looks like it. But between the gimbal update and the uh, that, the ability to be able to move your mirrors is really helpful for backing up. Like, I can use my mirrors now to kind of get me where I want to go. You know, there are a couple builds there that didn't have any mirrors. And unfortunately, I think that kind of, you know, that's not as cool. It's nice to have some mirrors here. Put the parking brake back on. Hazards will click on. A little bit of bleep lops on that. Let's see. Oh, uh, oh, you know what? It's based on look. That's neat. I was wondering why those are turning on and off. Like, what is going on there? All right, let's go ahead. Container handler is three. So we have a sliding table. Ooh, very high. So this is, uh, this definitely seems like this is based off, like, I'll have to ask chicken. So it seems like it's based off of a Mac um, dumpster loader because it has that very high table. You know, the, um, you know, like we were talking about the moving table on one of them. It's good for cars because it's, um, you know, it has that low approach angle. When you're loading a dumpster, you don't care, you know, if it's high. So let's see. Um, container lock four. All right, good. So that's it. Let's go ahead. I want to watch this. There you go. So that's pretty automated. I, I'm not a huge fan of it hanging off the edge like that. I think it would be better if you dragged it up first because it, it is making contact with the ground. So if you dragged it up first, uh, you know, IRL, they use um, hydraulic cable, hydraulic cylinders with cables on pulleys. Um, you know, it just it looks funky to me that when it hangs off, like we'll, we'll show it on the way up, but very cool. Looks like it has sticky steering. Interesting. All right, so uh, that's cool. Loads up pretty flawlessly. No real issues with that. No stickage. Let's go ahead and we'll go forward here. Uh, brakes coming off. Little bit um, rambunctious on acceleration. It's not bad, but it's a little bit rambunctious for me. Again, so like this one does not have uh, suspension. I like that. In my trucks, I do no suspension. It acts more like a truck to me. It doesn't bottom out. You know, you wouldn't be bottoming out on some of these with that. A little bit revvy of an engine, you know, 20 RPS a little high. You know, it's, it's tough to get the trucks to sound right in game. You know, you have to kind of go artificially low. Oh, shit, we hit the bottom there. All right, so disaster reverted. let's go ahead and back out of here. Yeah, so that's, you know, that's one thing I would fix on this is I think it revs a little bit high. It accelerates. Like, you saw how fast we zip backwards here. Like, it's a little bit car-y for me. I like it a little bit more like a truck, personally. You know, it's just, it's a little bit overly revvy, and it accelerates a little bit too fast. You know, I think that is, um, you know, I really, I absolutely love the way this looks. I like that it looks like a Mac uh, trash truck. I really do. I'm not a huge fan of this, um of the high revving. I think if you cut the revs down a little bit, it'd be fine. Like what gear are we, we're in second gear. We're going 52 kilometers an hour. So we're going pretty fast for, uh, you know, for this gear, you know, IRL, you'd probably be doing 10 miles an hour in this gear. So I'm not sure what that is in kilometers an hour, but um, not 55. So maybe slow it down a little bit. Uh, the five speed's probably fine. But I would slow the acceleration down a little bit because it's just it's a little bit jumpy. And so, like, I was coming on the base of that hill, and I want to accelerate slowly. And I ended up accelerating fast right into it. Um, you know, again, this this is designed to be an off-road course. So, uh, you know, it's kind of beware of the low-body trucks, which, you know, you have kind of a, um, a highway truck. These are designed to be city trucks. It was kind of like when I built my hook and ladder my um, tiller truck was, you know, that truck is designed. It's not supposed to be going on off-road. But uh, very cool design with this. I really love the Mack trash truck look. You know, I've always liked the Mack trash trucks. All right, let's go ahead and we'll unload here. I do like that it's on the seat. I, I like having the buttons, but it is kind of cool in the seat just because I can watch it, you know, so that's kind of cool. So we'll do a container handler. You know, I just want to bring this up again. Like, it, it unloaded fine. Let's bring this up a little bit. That's the one thing I don't like right there is see how it hangs off the back. 
you know, that, like, I really I love the design of this. It really looks very realistic to the real, like, Mac trash trucks. And, you know, right here, personally, if I were you, this is what I would do, Chicken Sewer. This is what I would like to see on this. So what I would do with this mechanism is I really like the, the height of it. It, it screams, uh, it screams container, uh, dumpster lifter to me. What I would do here is when you're loading, I would put something in that this does not uh, lower until the container is all the way in the back. So something like that, when the container's all the way in the back, that's when I would tilt it. But um, really, uh, really well done. I really like the look of it. Transmission and the engine, I'm not, you know, super thrilled with it just because it, it accelerates a little bit too much like a car. And, um, you know, I like it to grunt a little bit more like a truck. I like it to accelerate a little bit more like a truck. You know, your, high, your top speed's probably plenty, um, you know, you don't really need it to accelerate this fast. But uh, really great build, and I enjoyed looking at it. And behind me, we have the points winner and captain's favorite. So the points were really close. We had a bunch of builds that were all within about one point of one another. And so I have two of them that are kind of tied for my favorite. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give one of them captain's favorite, and I'm going to give one of them the points winner. They were both one point away from one another, and I was kind of uh, torn between which was going to be the favorite and which was going to be the points winner. So I'm going to award one for each. So let's first talk about the points winner, and the points winner is awarded to the Halo Tech Ascender by Guarded Halo. So congratulations, Guarded Halo. The Halo Tech Ascender is the points winner for the Build Challenge Hotel. And Captain's favorite is the Scania by Citrus. So both of these were really excellent trucks. I really like the Halo Ascender's hook lift mechanism. They're both really uh, beautifully built. A lot of great detailing on there. I really love the uh, Halo Tech Ascender's paint job. I love the cab design on it. I really enjoyed the mechanism to load and unload. I thought that was really cool. I liked some of the interior features, like the mood lighting. Kind of innovative with the way that the passenger side mirror works. I could use the mirrors. Big thing for me in this truck challenge was to have a truck that drove like a truck. Both of these really felt like trucks to me. That really shows a good handling of transmissions and engines to make it feel like a truck. The Scania, I really enjoyed the cab design of that. Really gorgeous. You know, some really good design on that. It looks very realistic. Some great uh, paint block work on both of these builds. A lot of really cool features on the Scania. Uh, tilting cab and a lot of little details here and there. I really love the Lua. Citrus did a fantastic job with the Lua work. You guys are the points winner for the Halo Tech Ascender. And Captain's favorite for the Build Challenge Hotel is the Scania. And there is still one more winner to be determined, and that is the community favorite. So we have all the builds here off to my right. Uh, the community will have the opportunity for about a week to vote on which build they thought was their favorite. So uh, go ahead on the Discord and you can uh, vote for which one is your favorite. So uh, thank you to all the competitors. This was a really fun challenge. I really enjoyed checking out all your builds, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.